Rise, building prayer, and the pledge of allegiance before we can meet in the post meeting. Dear Heavenly Father, as we close another year and season of life, we ask you to continue to sustain us each day. We have witnessed many difficulties and challenges over the past year. We know your love, grace, hope, and wisdom is there with us. We know that you're there every moment of time, and that's in your hands. We are thankful as we present the final budget today that you've provided the means for our county. We ask you for the wisdom going forward that we always make decisions that are in accordance with your will. Father, we especially pray for Commissioner Massar and Mayor Beto this morning as they enter another chapter of life. And we thank you for their lives and dedicated service to the county. <clears throat> May you bless them with good health as they turn this page to the next. We pray for the new year to be one with your blessings showering upon us. May our words and actions make a positive and encouraging impact to each other. We ask you for your guidance throughout the meeting. These things we humbly pray in your name. Amen. of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, good morning. We'll convene the commission's public meeting at this time. We'll ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Now move to approve. I'll second. I'll go say aye. 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 So Do you have any public comment? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Lady Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I have a fairly short prepared statement I'd like to read. Now, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Uh, Tom Sheck, Pensdale. Thank you. Gentlemen, as you close out 2023, and with it, many accomplishments, as well as challenges, you appear to be on the cusp of moving forward with the process of reassessment for all county properties. There was a seemingly compelling argument offered by the assessment office at the meeting on December the 14th, outlining the rationale behind a comprehensive reassessment. While the presentation did explain the process, it examines the current values of property and examples of aligning fair and equitable values to potentially under-tax parcels and improvements, it did little to allay the fears of increased tax liability on already stressed citizens. Truth be told, the millage would be adjusted to reflect a neutral impact on reassessed properties, but was not explained in detail was the fact that this grace period would only be for the time needed to complete the county as a whole and enter the newly revised data into a computer program. Municipalities and school districts alike will undoubtedly use this data to bolster their own coffers. Some may be necessarily so, but the majority will only develop healthier budgets of their own to support their agendas. All this comes on the back of the individual taxpayer or small business, who in many cases are living paycheck to paycheck given the inflationary spiral that we are all experiencing. Yet in the same breath, there are tax abatements and other breaks given to some developers, ostensibly with the hope that in the long run, the rewards to the county coffers will be a positive dividend given the initial outlay or deferral of real-time revenue. The everyday citizen or small business owner is never given a break, only the demand to again open their already slim wallet. I stood here on the 14th of December and stated many of the con concerns that I again bring to the podium. To that end, nothing has changed regarding our citizens' ability to juggle the cost of medication, food, and utilities, heating being the most important sector given this time of year. We have all heard stories of seniors making impossibly tough decisions as to what bills to pay, what medications to split or to be stopped altogether or how to minimize expenses from a myriad of other nightmares. No one can sit here and honestly say that the reassessment will not result in increased taxes on the backs of our most vulnerable constituents, our seniors. They're not seeing increases in Social Security, pensions, or other safety nets. While this economy rides on a precarious bubble that will break at any given moment, they will be subjected to significantly more stress. Additionally, I feel it's personally irresponsible to saddle two new members of this Board of Commissioners with this albatross when the decision should be made by those representing we the people for the next four years. It is not an abdication of the responsibilities of the existing commissioners to pass this on to the new board. Rather, it is a measure of transition that should be dealt with within the new year by a board that, that can conceivably oversee the process. I urge you all to pause and reflect on the implications of this decision before you make it. Please allow the new board in 2024 to consider this issue and act in the interest of our taxpayers. I also urge you as a board to delay any action on potential involvement with any developer or entity seeking funding for projects with tax, money, tax monies of any source or obligated without clear plans and impacts to county taxpayers. Too often of late we are subject to a position of we have to pass the bill so you can see what's in it mentality. That stance has brought untoward consequences to taxpayers at the federal and state level. It is imperative that the county taxpayers be given clear direction as to the scope and impact of the development project before precious tax dollars are committed, regardless of a loan or grant status. My opinion is this. If these developers are so anxious to locate here, let them expend their funds in the interest of anticipated profits. It is not good fiscal practice for government to bankroll development on the backs of individual taxpayers, especially in a perilous economy. In closing, I wish to thank our outgoing commissioners, Rick, and Tony, for your outgoing, excuse me, for your service and commitment to our county and our citizens. While we have often had spirit, spirited discussion and disagreement on some issues, 
it isn't lost on this taxpayer that you have incredibly challenging positions that you must take. I want to extend my best wishes for you going forward and look forward to working with our newly elected officials in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment at this time? Mr. Chairman, there was a request about calling. Someone is trying to dial in. And Thank what you. is the number, Matt? 570 okay. okay, any other public comment this time? We have someone who's joined us by phone. Yes, Commissioner, this is Austin, sorry. Good morning, Austin. Anybody else? Yes, Commissioner, Jason Yorks. Good morning, Jason. Okay, we'll move on to reports. Okay, Commissioner? Um, yes. I'd like to request uh, approval to add an item to the agenda that was not previously listed. Okay. And that is the collective bargaining agreement with the county detectives and that will be action item 6.7 Mr. Chairman, I'll move to amend the agenda to the edge of collective bargaining agreement between the Lincoln County Detectives and my county county Second motion. All there, sir. Aye. Aye. So this, yes. Can we just note that there was a matter that came up with less than 24 hours prior to the meeting and the publishing of the agenda? Sure, Mr. Chairman, my reason for amending the agenda is that a matter came up Within the last 24 hours, it did not allow us to Correct. put it on the original agenda. Okay. Bargaining unit approved last night. Right, bargaining unit approved it last night. Okay, so noted. And all in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. This item is the agenda. Okay, Kaylin? <coughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. First, I have presented for your ratification our invoices due through December 31st, 2023, to be paid on December 20th for $2,235,749.52. The breakdown is as follows, with 39.56% being funded by the general fund at $884,556.24. 22.10% is being funded by other grants and pass-through monies at $494,118.32. 36.21% is being funded by RMS at $809,577.54. 2.12% is being funded by escrow at $47,497.42. Okay, is there a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all of yourself. Aye. Aye, it's okay. And next, I have presented for your application or invoices also due through December 31st to be paid on December 27th for $1,773,313.69. The breakdown is as follows with 32.43% being funded by the general fund at $575,011.24. 21.48% is being funded by other grants and pass-through monies at $380,945.68. 46.04% is being funded by RMS at $816,497.86. 0.05% is being funded by escrow for $858.91. Okay, motion. I move to approve. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Hearing now, on your side? Aye. 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 So Thank you. Thank you, Kaylin. All right, moving on to information items. Uh, there's a representative Joe Ham and Jamie Clay, your end updates. Okay. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right. So we both just come up um, 
our year-end report is um, Harrisburg's a mess, and uh, we're fighting for you. Um, today we're here to um, honor two men, uh, two men who have given so much to their community, um, two men that um, I know will continue to serve. They may be walking away from uh, being a county commissioner, but their service will continue, and they will continue to be uh, involved in our community. And so uh, today, it is uh, my great honor to um, recognize Commissioner Tony Masser and Commissioner Rick Maravito um, for all the work they've done here in Lycoming County, um, here in our communities. And, you know, it's not easy. Uh, being an elected official, it's not easy serving. Um, they put long hours in. It's not just one meeting a month or two meetings a month and sitting up here. Um, there is a lot of work that goes into serving. And whether that's at your local township level all the way up to your county commissioner level, um, they put significant amounts of time. And they sacrifice. Uh, their families sacrifice because of the time that they spend uh, doing the job uh, that they're called to do. Um, Tony and Rick are, are both uh, public servants and two guys that, um, quite frankly, I have always looked up to. Uh, I will say that while I don't always agree with uh, my, my good friend Rick Maravito, um, we always had respect for one another. And um, um, we had some fun along the way. Uh, I remember writing a letter to the editor. I was young and dumb, but wrote a letter to the editor calling uh, Rick out for his Brooklyn politics. Now, if you know anything, uh, Rick is not from Brooklyn. He's from Long Island. And in New York, when you call someone from the wrong area, they, they, that's kind of offensive to them. Um, so I like to have a little fun. Uh, Rick got me back. It was a uh, debate, a commissioner debate, prior to an election. And I was just in the audience. And uh, Rick took a shot at me, and it was good. Uh, I smiled, um, and he knew I couldn't say anything because I was in the audience. And, you know, he was on the stage with the other candidates. So uh, we've always had fun, and um, uh, you know, whether we agree or disagree, um, the bottom line is I know that uh, his heart is in the right place. It was to serve, to help his neighbor, um, and uh, so I have a uh, house citation for Commissioner. Uh, Maribito, uh, Representative Flick and I both have um, co-sponsored both of the uh, citations. Uh, Rick lives in my district, Tony lives in Jamie's district, so in Harrisburg, uh, the member who has the individual in their district uh, does the uh, citation. So I'll read the citation for Rick, and then uh, Jamie will uh, do Tony's. Uh, whereas the Honorable Richard Marabito, a former member of the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania, is being honored upon his retirement from the Lycoming County Board of Commissioners, concluding an exemplary career spanning more than 34 years. Whereas a graduate of North Shore High School, Cornell University, and the Boston College Law School, Mr. Marabito began his career as a law clerk for the United States District Judge Malcolm Muir in 1989, and he has owned and operated several businesses for more than 25 years. Elected to the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania for the 2009 term, he served the 83rd Legislative District until 2014. To his great credit, Mr. Bar Marabito has served two consecutive terms as a member of the Lycoming County Board of Commissioners, and he is retiring from the position of commissioner. During his tenure, the board partnered with local Chamber of Commerce to bring several new businesses into the county, established the Lycoming County Partnership Health Center, and introduced a bundled bridge program to replace 14 local bridges. A member of the Fire Tree Place Board and the Lycoming County Conservation District uh, Prison Election and Library System Boards, Mr. Marabito is a past president and the founder of the Wayansport Landlord Association, a life member of the James V. Brown Library Board. Throughout his career, he's demonstrated remarkable knowledge, ability, and integrity in carrying out his many responsibilities, thus earning the respect and gratitude of all those who receive the benefit of his tireless devotion to duty. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania congratulates the Honorable Richard Marabito upon his well-deserved retirement, heartily recognizes his exemplary record of service in keeping with the highest ideals and traditions of this Commonwealth, and offers best wishes for a happy and fulfilling future. 
and directs that a copy of this citation sponsored by Representatives Joe Hamm and Jamie Flick be transmitted to the Honorable Richard Maravillo. Total surprise. I actually thought we were getting a report on Harrisburg. <laughs> um, and as I was listening to Joe, and I was thinking that, um, you know, oftentimes I'll say to my son, uh, if we can't get along in our community, how do we expect the world to become a better place, the nations of the world? And as, I, as you were reading, and I was thinking about uh, all of our things going on in the community, I thought, you know, it's like a marriage, right? You know, some of us may feel one way in the marriage about certain things, and others may feel another way, but at the end of the day, we want our family to be strong. We don't just walk away from our marriages. We don't ever let the level of discord get so high with our spouses. And somehow, we have to find a way, as neighbors, to be the same way. There's no question Joe and I disagree, but I don't doubt that Joe absolutely has his heart in bettering this community. And I mean that with all sincerity. And so if we can find a way, individually and collectively, to try to bridge the gap and never let the discord become so painful with things that we wish we hadn't said, which sometimes we do in our marriages too, right? Then we're gonna, we're gonna have a better shot at making our community better. And the reality is we all have something to contribute. Right? We all have something to contribute. Joe's perspective. Joe, my neighbor, absolutely adores you. You helped him out. You helped him out when he was in a crisis. And that means a lot to people, right? Because at the end of the day, you feel sometimes it's an impersonal world <clears throat> out there. So thank you very much. It means the world to me. And, and uh, whether I'm from Brooklyn or Long Island, <laughs> or wherever, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, where, these days, I'm just from. Cogan Station. <laughs> Thanks. Very good. I'm going to have Mary stand with me here. So, uh, Rick, again, congratulations. Um, I know that Joe wanted to flip a coin to see who got you and who got Tony to hand the citation out. Um, so, Tony. Uh, I've known Tony for 30 years. I've known Rick for 20, 25 years. So, Tony and I are dear friends. And I'm not even through year one yet as a state representative. I was sworn in January 3rd. So, I was reflecting here at the end of the year on my campaign. And it's campaign season again. So, I thought, you know, what, what words can I say about Tony? So, I met with him maybe a year and a half ago. And I thought, you know, can, can I run? Can I run? Can I actually do this thing? And the thing about all three commissioners is they're all optimists. And you think you have to be to have this job. You get beat up a lot. Joe and I get beat up a lot. Lots of hate. Now, you just have to not ignore it, but look at it, process it, and move on and, and be positive. And that's what Tony has always been to me. So when I decided to run, I met with him. And he said, I think you can win, Jamie. I really think you, you have a shot at this. I said, OK, what's step one? I have no political background. Went to, to uh, meet with Mary. And he goes, you got to get your name out there. You really do. So. He goes, go to the Lycoming County Republican Committee, so, which Mary is a member. So I called him after that meeting. I said, well, Tony, they endorsed my opponent 88 to 3. <laughs> and he says, you got three votes? And I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, that's good. You got three votes. Thanks for a third of those, Mary. Um, so that was, that was like a head shaker. But then he said, if you lost by 85, go knock on 86 doors, is exactly what he said to me. So the next day, next couple of days, I went out and knocked on 86 doors. He goes, you got to get your name out there. Go to Little League events, go to bingo events, go everywhere you could. So I then set up a ice cream social at a um, nursing home in Loyal Sock. And I went and I got chocolate and vanilla and I got my name tag on. And the first guy comes up with a walker and he says, hey, I used to have your job. And I said, oh, you served ice cream. And he says, no, you idiot, I was a state rep. <laughs> and I said, I, I have so much to learn. And that was Bob Wise, who was a state rep in 1969. Some of you know Bob Wise. The next gentleman that was in line was Tom Dempsey, who was a state rep right after that. So one Democrat, one Republican, and this is what I got a taste. I said, could I get a picture with both of you? And at the same time, they said, no. <laughs> so I want to commend all three commissioners for, for working together, um, always putting the party to the side and working for the people of Lycoming County. You've done, both of you, all three of you, an absolutely incredible job. 
I have no doubt that that will continue with Mark and Mark also. So that's my, my little story. I did go on uh, to, to be successful. And one of the last thoughts I have about Tony is I had applied for some Act 13 money years ago for a ball field. And not only does Tony you know, work hard to get you that money, when I showed up at the ball field, the first guy there to work on the dugout was Tony. So these guys don't just you know, process things, hand out money. They are there. Um, I did have Rick throw out a first pitch yet once, and that was really a disaster, Rick. I, 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 maybe baseball's not my. Yeah. Favorite. I don't think it's all it's it's all it's a lot of anxiety. <laughs> to throw the first pitch out. Of so I don't think I invited you back and throw that out. Our catcher was really upset. That thing. So further citation, and again, um, as Joe said, it, it's it's not just you two gentlemen. It's your families and your wives, and and what Mary and the Musser family has sacrificed. And, and Sarah and everybody is just uh, unbelievable. So thank, thank them for me. So for the citation, whereas the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania is always proud to acknowledge those individuals who, through professional excellence, bring great credit to themselves and this Commonwealth. And whereas Tony Mousser is being honored upon his retirement from Lycoming County Board of Commissioners after a career spanning 36 years. And whereas a graduate of Williamsport Area Community College with a degree in business management, Mr. Mousser has served as Vice President of ARM Services, Inc. since 1987, and he also owns a real estate company with his sons and has served on the Leadership Council of the NFIB. A member of the Lycoming County Board of Commissioners since 2012, he is retiring from the position of Vice Chair. During his tenure, Mr. Mousser has assisted with the acquisition of more than 1,000 acres of property from the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the introduction of the Bundle Bridge Program, the formation of a team of non-federal sponsors, to address issues with the Williamsport levy system and the establishment of a Lycoming County Partnership Health Center. In addition, he has been active with several organizations, including the South Williamsport Lions Club, the Lycoming Emergency Planning Commission, the Seated Council of Governments, the Lycoming Clinton Joinder Board, and the Lycoming County Prison and Election Boards. Now, therefore, the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania congratulates Tony Mousser and to me, along with Mary Mousser and the entire family, upon their well-deserved retirement heartily recognizes his exemplary record of service in keeping with the highest ideals and traditions of the Commonwealth and offers best wishes for a happy and fulfilling future. And directs that a copy of this citation, sponsored by Representatives Jamie Flick and Joe Hamm, be submitted to Tony Mousser. Thank you.
and we certainly do. And and my I, I applaud you for that hard, dedicated work. You know, as commissioners, I'm very proud that I've been served with uh, three boards of commissioners, all very dedicated to what they do. You know, um, they talk about the family, and I can I can tell you a real quick story that last year we we're on we we're on the bay out there in uh, Delaware. I'm just taking a call because I'm in a meeting. I said, hey, slow down the boat, man. I said, you know, I got this is going to be a 45-minute boat. I wasn't thinking about them. I was thinking, hey, I got to be involved in this meeting. And here, it took us a little bit longer to get across the bay, and, you know. But that's a sacrifice that, that your families, uh, you know, go through when you're an elected official. Um, it is, it is, uh, county government is just, something that you, you love, you appreciate. Because not only do you work with your, your co-workers, your colleagues in, in other counties as well, you're, you're working with some of the best staff to service constituents that you've ever seen. When you look at this agenda today, it's a long agenda, right? It didn't happen in 30 minutes, right? The people that are working for this county and it's every department, every elected official. They work tirelessly to get this agenda made for us. It may have been, you know, we look at it, some instances it may have been three weeks. Other instances it may have been two years to come to fruition to be on our, our desk to vote. And that didn't come just from us. That comes from the dedicated staff. So, you know, um, it, it, it was awesome um, uh, participating with the, you know, the colleges, what great partners they've been for Lycoming like County. The nonprofits, we would never have been able to do the ARPA without our nonprofits helping us along the way. Just so many people to be thankful for and uh, appreciative for. And my closing remark will be this, you know, I always believed in putting something up in front of you, and, you know, so that you never forget. And it, it stays there, so it keeps you grounded, and that's, that um, good effect of government can only be accomplished by citizens' participation. When our citizens refuse to vote, or they refuse to participate, or refuse to call, gather, protest, whatever, we're losing our democracy. Okay, we're losing our republic. Don't ever forget that. It's too precious. It's just too precious to let go. So uh, I appreciate everyone here and, uh, and, and all the employees in the state rooms as well. So thanks. So I want to add to this, um, as I've had the privilege of working with these two gentlemen, the accomplishments of, the, I want to do this while this room's full, before it empties out. Because I want, to, I want the public to hear the accomplishments that these gentlemen were involved with. Shortly after uh, 2000, we had COVID hit, we all know that. <clears throat> Three months in, and we were faced with many challenges. And we kept COVID on the bay, we kept things operational due to our leaders in this county, we kept things open and we were able to function. Through that, we received CARES money. And we could have kept all the CARES money, but we decided not to do so. We gave $200 to each school district <coughs> per student. That was $3 million went to the school districts. We helped 350 businesses. We helped 43 nonprofits. The Bridge Bundling Program, which is, which is a program modeled across the state, which started in a previous administration with uh, Mr. McKernan, uh, he should be given credit on this, along with the two commissioners, and it's continued into now. Uh, we've completed 17 bridges. When you're at a statewide conference and, and you're talking to a commissioner from Northumberland County and they hear about the bridge bundling program, and they don't know how they're going to replace a bridge down there, they said, hey, can, can you have our pl your planning department call us? Because we, uh, we need some guidance. The funding for protective gear for county law enforcement, huge. Making sure our law enforcement had the protective gear so that they go home to their family safe at night. We made sure that every county agency had that protective gear. Funding for every fire department in Lycoming County, they suffered terribly through COVID. Suffered terribly, and we gave each one of them 
funding for Mama and Tasca, the training for the police or for the fire personnel. Two hundred ninety thousand dollars went to their training, so they, they could continue their training. The um, funding that went between South Williamsport and uh, Loyal Sock Township, and the partnership between those two those two municipalities. The funding for the four townships, the Northern Alliance, Northern Alliance for their fire and EMS. Today we're going to be voting on funding for further training for fire personnel, having to do with lithium batteries and how to safely put those fires out. The same program, which has to do with rape victims, brought to us by the DA a few years ago, making sure those nurses were trained properly in testimony in court and providing rape kits to those rape victims. And recently we've, we've um, expanded it to all sexual assault victims, including children. The sale of the land across from the landfill, the farm, Digger Associates is over there now, brought 150 jobs. And we're in discussions with further businesses for further development over there. The ARPA funds, we made a decision to do generational impact. Over $7 million went to water and sewer projects. Four million of that's gonna to go to the levy system. We already had committed a million in the previous administration, so we've committed five million to the levy system. The housing initiative program that came out of the ARPA program. Our ARPA program was recognized by Senator Casey as one of the model programs to follow across the state when he came here to visit us. He says, we share this with the rest of the state on how to, how to utilize your ARPA funds. The housing initiative program. Two million last year, two million this year. We spoke with the developers. They need help getting the infrastructure to the sites. And we have one that was just approved for 50 some houses in the Loyal Sock Township. And then we have other ones on the agenda in the near future to bring in additional housing that's gonna increase the tax revenue in this county. The mall project, a loan to the mall for $5 million, hopefully for economic development in the future. As we see that transform into the next few years, what that's gonna become to help our county. The levy system as we continue to work on that. The purchase of the Corners building. We purchased the building for $399,000. It's in the works of being done. The corner will have a home. The Sharwell move, we moved the Sharwell to the fourth floor of the Executive Plaza. That will save over half a million dollars a year. The sale of the Executive Plaza, this building right here, we sold for more than a million dollars than what it was listed. The sale of the FOB property, which was in 20 years in the making, it's done. The sale of the land for the expansion of the transfer station, so that people don't have to sit on 3rd Street and, and have a traffic hazard. The sale of the, the land for the conversion of the White Deer Golf Course. So therefore we can transfer, transform that over there and, and also bring additional housing. The settlement of the leachate tank, which is a, a dozen years in its making, for $2.9 million to the county. Um, none of this would have happened, none of it, without a team effort. The department heads, the elected officials that were all involved in these decisions. And these two gentlemen right here, we got things done. And they sh their hats should be tipped for what they've done, along with the leadership in this county and all the employees. They work, Commissioner Massar is absolutely right. You can come by these, these buildings on weekends, the lights are on. Those employees come down here, they're dedicated, they work from home, they work at night, they work on weekends because they care about constituents in this county. So uh, they work extremely hard, all the credits do because none of this would have happened without a team effort. But it's been an honor to be a part of this and to work with these two gentlemen well in the future. We'll continue to work on the levy system with the new board, the small stream flooding initiative, clean up the small streams, and lastly the commercial air service to this airport. We're not going to rest until we get that commercial airline service into the airport. So those are future projects that so we'll continue to work on with long for many. But again, thank you, gentlemen, and our team in the county. You know, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned, um, and Commissioner Massaire mentioned, uh, projects that have extended beyond. We have two commissioners here from prior terms, yes. Commissioner Ernie Larson, who <laughs> must remember the sound 
the sale of the FOP land, and we have Commissioner Jack McKernan, who remembers fondly the bridge bundling and the leachate tank. We thank you both for coming. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I want to add a couple more things, and that, that is, um, Scott, you've been a tremendous leader. Very difficult time with COVID. I mean, some of the decisions that we had to make, that, that we had to make, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the sheriff back there every day, we had COVID meetings, and how are we going to address a new issue? It was daily. And then trying to get guidance from the state and federal governments that just weren't open. You know, and even to this day, Eric, you're calling the, you call for the um, uh, IRS and nobody's answering the phone. Yeah. You, you know, they hang up on you. Young <laughs> governments have to work. You know, municipalities, counties, we have to continue to work, and we can't get the help sometimes. But you've led us through probably one of the most difficult times in my coming county history. I would say, um, uh, we didn't always agree. But we can say one thing for sure is uh, we had to make decisions, and that's where it stood. And it would be remiss of any of us um, uh, to forget about one of the most important, what I believe is a bedrock or the foundation of county government, for the most part, is the director of administration. <coughs> uh, I can't say enough. Uh, a lot of stress. We see it, <laughs> you know. So thanks for your service. And our director, he's available. Literally, when I say twenty four seven, it's twenty four seven. Yeah. I've seen him work on Christmas. I've seen him work on New Year's. All the time. All the time. He gets up in the morning, five a.m. He's checking his emails. Um, I've had him on the phone eleven o'clock at night. And, uh, back to COVID, I want to thank. There's two department heads here. We're, we're in the audience today. We're very instrumental through COVID. Actually, moved their departments. That's Tom Eve and, and uh, Dave Huffman. They moved it across the street to the old bank so that um, transactions could get done for the local banks, the people that needed to sell their homes and make transactions. Um, it was a difficult time for both those departments, and they worked through it. And without their assistance, those things would not happen. So thank you, gentlemen. And I want to say it's been a pleasure working with both of you. We have sometimes butted heads, but that's part of the process. And it's like I said earlier, it's important to have that. That's why they made three commissioners. That's why the statute doesn't say there'll be one commissioner or two commissioners, but three commissioners. And, and Mr. McDermott, you, you do work tirelessly. And you are one of the hardest working individuals I know. Um, we've also sometimes disagreed. Um, but I've tried to always be honest uh, about everything. But um, you, you guys are both hard workers. You, Mr. McDermott, are an incredibly hard worker. Not that they're incredibly hard workers either. <laughs> no, but it, it has been it has been a, a good time, and I hope that the new board coming in um, <coughs> recognizes that you, you need to be on top of the stuff because the staff part of our job is to give the staff guidance and direction and to make sure not not micromanage, but to take the big picture. And sometimes some of the decisions we make, some constituents may not agree with, but we're trying to take the big picture of where we're going as a county. Uh, but it's been a great, a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, personal actions. Morning. Good morning. I have the following personnel actions as conditional offers of employment. Um, pending successful completion of background check and other employment conditions. For the district attorney's office, Angela Lockridge, a clerk three, full-time replacement, 1661 per hour, 75 hours per pay period starting January 2nd, 2024. Um, district attorney's office, Matthew Hutchinson, clerk three, full-time replacement, 1661 per hour, 75 hours per pay, start date um, is January 2nd, 2024. The pre-release center, David Fox, resident supervisor one, full-time replacement at 18.10 per hour, 80 hours per pay, period, starting January 8th, 2024. Pre-release center, 
Shayla Weiland, resident supervisor one, full time replacement, 1810 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, start date of January 7, 2024. Pre release center, Michelle Probes, resident supervisor one slash cook, full time replacement, 1810 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, start date of January 8, 2024. Prison, Sean Meskel, Correction Officer 1, full-time replacement, $20 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, start date of January 8, 2024. Prison, Tiffany Miller, Correction Officer 1, full-time replacement, $20 per hour, 80 hours per pay period, start date of January 8, 2024. Prison, Kayla Mall, Correction Officer 1, part-time replacement, $20 per hour, not to exceed 1,000 hours annually. Transfer date would be December 24, 2023. Budget and Finance, <coughs> Emily Snyder, Accountant 1, full-time replacement, $49,237.50 per year, 75 hours per pay period, Effective January 7, 2024. The court's Caitlin Solomon, Administrative Specialist, full time replacement, $16.85 per hour, 75 hours per pay period with a start date of January 2, 2024. Resource Management Services, Scott Young, Transfer Station Driver, full time replacement, $19.98 per hour. 80 hours per pay period, start date January 15, 2024. Okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Yeah, second. Any questions or comments? Hearing no negative, so I'm right. aye. So carried. Thank you. <coughs> this time we will recess the Commissioner's Public Meeting for the Board of Assessments and Revisions. Meet the Board of Assessments and Revisions at this time. Good morning, bro. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm here seeking your approval for a refund for LeClerc Foods USA. This refund is a result of a real estate appeal that was filed in 2022. We have settled and the value was changed on the parcel due to a court order. The refund amount is $11,541.59. That's county taxes only, right? Yes, that is correct. So just looking at the... Um at the document you gave us, because I, I kind of want the public to understand, they don't necessarily have a document. The old assessed value was $5,718,000, right? That's correct. They filed an appeal and they said, hey, we think we're paying too many taxes. <clears throat> and they went out and got... They got an appraisal done, and their appraisal came in at $6,485,000. The board denied it, they did not like it, so we went out and got an appraisal. Our appraisal came in at $7.5 million. But we have to apply the common level ratio to the seven point five million, which brings it down to I think it was three point nine. Three point nine, yes, three point nine million. So we have to bring the value back down to the two thousand four base year. So even though the appraisal they had was higher than the assessed value that we had on record, and even though our appraisal was higher than their appraisal, when we went to court the judge has to apply the common level ratio. Yes, that is correct. And so it, it takes it almost 50%. Yes. So we cut in half the value of the taxes that that company is going to pay. And they're not doing anything illegal. They're yeah. perfectly entitled to this by the law. They get the common level ratio, and we and the county taxpayers end up losing $11,541,000. The school taxes lost money. The township, everybody. 11000 11, Yeah, $11,541. Um, now, was that 11541 just for a certain time period, or it's not for the entire year? That is for the 2023 year, and that is just the difference from the old assessed value to the new assessed value. Okay. Originally, with the $5.7 million, they were paying about 37000 Since we are at $3.9 million now, next year they will pay 20, around 25000 And that's just county taxes only. That's not including the township district. Right. So, and this, this is an example of how, um, in case after case, the lack of the reassessment contributes to a situation where the difference, that 11,000 has to be made up by other people. So, 
that can actually, if you add enough of them up, can actually result in a necessity for a tax increase. Because you're going back to 2024. Okay, I just wanted to understand that. Any comments? Motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. On your side? Thank you. Uh, right. Thanks, bro. Okay. Thank you, Brooke. We'll adjourn the Board of Assessments Revision at this time, and we'll be convening the Commission for the meeting. All right, moving on to action items. Commissioner, I would like to bring up uh, action item 6.8. That's been readjusted for the one we added. Uh, just to do that first. Um, and that is seeking your approval on the allocation of funds to the Boys Town Fire Department in the amount of $8,900 out of Act 13. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Bob here? Paul here. Okay. Who's here at represented? Yes. You like to vote? Yes. Morning. Kurt Waller, representative of the Fire Department. Um, the funds that we're requesting money for is to bring instructors down from FDNY out of New York to teach the fire service in this county and probably will be some out of this county on how to deal with lithium ion batteries. It's a hot topic that's been anywhere, like all over the US. It ranges anywhere from cell phone batteries up to cars. We're seeing it more and more and how to <coughs> deal with them safely. I know we've had a couple is minor issues. Luckily, it's all they've been at the landfill that have been dealing with it. The problem is, is it's new. Not everybody knows how to deal with these in mass quantities. As far as finding any of our local instructors around here, they don't have the experience in this topic. A lot of all the information and where we're learning stuff is coming from New York. And unfortunately, where they've invested a lot of time and money has been due to burning down city blocks. They've had some of them like the scooter and the bicycle shops that are catching fire due to improper use or anything like that. And they've invested a lot of time and money throughout the last couple of years. That's where the knowledge is coming from. And we'd like to bring that here to benefit the residents here so hopefully we can stop stuff before it becomes a city block and all that. So that's why we've requested the funds for this, sir. Well, period. We had a little play on words, hot topic. Uh, they burn what? Quite hot. Yes. Unfortunately, like if you look at like, if you look at cars just in general, typically your average fire truck or engine with 500 to 750 gallons, which they average run, can put out an average car fire fully involved. If you're talking a fully electric with the whole base of it being a lithium ion battery, you're looking at probably five to seven tankers of anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 gallons of water. You will find that like with vehicles alone, um, California is in the process of passing one to where when any electric vehicle out there catches fire, their tow companies actually have to put them in a dumpster and submerge them in water for a couple of days because they've been notorious to rekindle not once, but two or three times. Because once you damage that battery until you can fully get it drained and cooled down, you don't know, there's, the hazard is always there and it could reignite. And how many people in the audience knew that this was a major problem? You know, yeah. So, so you have a, a handful that that are aware of it, and here we have volunteer firemen and women that that uh, stay up. You know, they 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 read about all the, the concerns and challenges, especially with these lithium batteries. They bring it to our attention. And uh, it, it's just a small price to, to pay to, to save lives. And it's not just vehicles. It's a matter of is how many people bought their kids and grandkids the electric powered scooters and the bicycles and they're being used in their homes and everything else. 
once they get damaged or an improper charger or anything like that and you overheat them, that's the where a problem arises and that's where your fire can come from. Improper use, disposal, it can be something small that that's the cause of why your house burned down or something else. So it's not just the video. Blankets. They've made, there's a blanket that you can use for electric vehicles. They're roughly about $300,000 or yeah, $3,000 depending on what manufacturer, give or take a couple hundred bucks. That's one way that they're talking that you can put out electric vehicles is you have to get this blanket safely over it and basically you're going to smother it. The problem lies there though is the second you go to move that, you pull it onto a wrecker, it could rekindle. So they can help stop the spread, but if we invest $3,000 in a blanket, they are only good for, the one that we just purchased was I think 30 uses, Fair, or, as long as there's no wear, additional wear and tear with that. But the problem is, is so we just spent $3,000 on a blanket, the record company comes to take the car, do we give them our blanket to keep on that? And then we're out. Or what, where do we do? And that's what we're hoping to learn on other ways to make this so we don't have additional fires or the car dealership doesn't burn a whole car lot down because of one bad apple or something. And there's charging stations popping up all over. People are putting them in their houses and plugging them in. It's hazards that we don't know. Of. It's a new, it's new, and we don't have the training, nor have the resources to bring. Unfortunately, due to the cost with it, because we can't just use local level instructors. Because actually, I have a couple of the local level instructors that teach a lot of other classes that are very experienced that would like to take this class because they don't know besides videos, YouTube, other training like articles that you read. There's been nobody here locally that's brought this information down. Mr. Yorts is on the phone. How do we dispose of these batteries? Or if you know, Mr. Weldon, what, what should constituents do who have a damaged electric bike and what you're suggesting is that once it's been damaged, it's compromised? As far as where we're putting them here locally in the county, I do not know that. That would be something where you have to reach out to a battery manufacturer or distributor and see if they can take them, but some of them will not take them if they're damaged or leaking. I don't know if Mr. Yorks has something set up at the landfill or unfortunately like everybody else, they throw it in their household garbage. Is he on the line? Yeah, he's on the line. Yeah, he's on the line. Yeah, he's on the line. If I may, commissioners, um, Unfortunately, there is right now no home for a vehicle battery. We do have a vehicle battery at a local dealership waiting to try to find a home and the, the car manufacturer wouldn't even take their own battery back. Uh, I, I had a conversation with one of the battalion chiefs of the city fire department a couple weeks ago because uh, he called and reached out to me and asked if I had a location. We do not. As far as the small ones, as I mentioned, we are working on a place uh, in New Jersey with Green Chip as a company we're working with, and we're going to be pushing out information to the public on how to prep the small batteries by, you know, like using tape or some way of covering the leads of the battery. But when it comes to like vehicles, there is right now no known outlet for this area that I can come up with. It is a huge concern, and I. Do appreciate your support for this class. I, I've already asked to enroll in that class with uh, some of the staff here at the Lancel as well, because it is a serious issue uh, that we're facing. We should ask our, our federal elected officials to require by statute that the companies take the batteries back and not simply place the burden on, on local government to, we'll end up having to yep. dispose of them. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Any other comments? Chair One, thank you for bringing this to us. Thank you. It's a very, very important much. topic and, and a serious issue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a motion. I move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Sir, you don't have to stick around. It's going to be sir. a long. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Moving on to.
back to 6.1 through 6.2. Eric? Good morning, everybody. Um, I ask that the Board of Commissioners adopt Resolution 2023-27, the 2024 budget. Okay, I got a motion to approve the adopted 2024 budget. I'll move to approve. I'll second that. Any comments or questions? Can you give us and the public some highlights of the budget in terms of where our fund balances and um, sure. some the, um, the county is pretty big. Um, if you count all the funds, we're going to be spending $172 million in 2024 and bringing in $123 million for all funds. The difference would be made up for the savings that we've had uh, in, in fund balance. The general fund budget is 88 million in expenditures and 65.7 million in revenues. That again is made up in uh, current fund balances. Um, we're looking at ending fund balance for the general fund, which of 15.4 million. That does meet the GFLA Government Finance Officers Association recommended amount of two months of budget expenses. So we could operate without any revenue coming in for two months. There's no tax increases. There is a short-term borrowing potentially of $2 million if needed. Wages are increased uh, at 3%. And we're looking at $15 million in spending of the ARPA money. Uh, we also got the 3.4 million in revenue for Executive Plaza this year. And we got 2.9 million for the RMS leachate tank settlement this year as well. Uh, the big item is the capital investment. The county is investing a lot of money in buildings that need to be done. Um, it's probably been delayed for some time, and um, they're putting quite a bit, uh, 26 million dollars uh, in total with RMS into public capital items. That's substantial and beneficial to the county as a whole for the long term. Okay. And one of my concerns was you can't do everything at one time and we were having a yes. lot of projects in 2024. Right. We had to put some of those off to 2025 obviously. Right. And um, so it's, we have some big ticket items and so the HVAC system next door to the courthouse and uh, you know, that's anywhere from four to six million to four to six million dollars. Those are some of the big items that we're facing. Uh, you know, we, might have to take, we might have to take out a short-term loan on that. Um, again, you don't deplete your, your cash in a business to take care of a big ticket item that's going to be with you for over 20, 20 plus years. Um, what's our Act 13 balance currently? We're uh, over $24 million. $24 million. Yeah. Okay. Eric, are the golf course Rent numbers in here. They are. Okay. They created a, a specific fund for the golf course, and that's included. I want to tell you, I think you've done a great job in terms of the format. This document is on the computer, on it's the, on the website. On the website. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually a really easy to read document um, with things like, <laughs> uh, you know, table of contents and just. And some background that background. wasn't in the, wasn't in the previous. <laughs> but but I really think you did an excellent job. I mean, obviously every every board, I mean every prior budget office has done a great job. You, you took it in another direction in terms of making it really customer friendly yeah. for customers, meaning our constituents. And I think that that is something you should feel really good about because reading these in the past has sometimes been difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. I think what you also have to, the you know, public has to be aware of is that it's uh, the revenue comes in. Uh, and gets posted in the year which we receive. So we had $11 million coming in 2022 for our ARPA, the 11 million coming in for 2023, that's $22 million. Okay, that doesn't count as revenue for 2024 in our budget. So that $22 million will show up as a deficit. 
it won't you know balance each other out because we we received that money in prior years. So now we just had to spend it. Right. Um, and, and and hopefully, you know, the, the, the everything is done accordingly and, and you know the, the trying to get guidance from the, the state and federal government on this money it's a, it's a nightmare it is a nightmare. and they keep changing it <laughs> they still change it and they just changed something else two weeks ago and yep. how do we deal with that you know because if we don't do it right we have to send it back and if we don't spend it then we have to send it back well we hope that all these projects are are going to come to fruition so and C.D. Cog and the Planning Department have been very instrumental in making sure we're dealing with changes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and so as, as the Chairman mentioned, and we talked about this at the last meeting, we may go out, as you mentioned, I guess, for a short-term loan, $2 million, um, that we can then, down the road, when the bond market becomes better, we can convert some of these long-term capital improvement costs into a bond, which would be decision for the next board. But it's, it's not a great time to be no. issuing a bond now. Or you get the pay off. Right. Mm -hmm. Over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? No. Are you done a little paper side? Aye. Aye. So we're here by Okay. Next item is resolution 2223-28, a five-year capital plan for, for adoption. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. On your side? Aye. Aye. Next item is uh, resolution 2023-29, uh, real estate tax assessment set for 100%. Motion? No, no change. I'll move to approve. I'll second. On your side? Aye. 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 And finally, uh, resolution 2023-30, uh, retaining the current real estate tax rate of uh, 6.5 mil. Motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. On their side? Aye. Aye. I want to thank everybody who worked on the budget. Department heads, everybody, yeah. elected officials, to make sure that um, we kept the line and that we can have to increase taxes. Good. And it's due to the leadership and, and the hard efforts of everybody. And to you as well. Thank you. Okay. All right, Commissioner, seeking your approval to proceed with a countywide reassessment. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Questions or discussion? Hospital. Um, I believe ever since uh, in 2012, when I came into office, and um, that's one of the first things I got involved in uh, at the state level with assessment taxation board um, is complicated on, uh, on how how a reassessment works. I wish I could tell you how everything's going to turn out. I cannot. It's, it's, it's not possible. But what I can assure you is that every time, and I, and I have I printed it out, Rick Brooks saw it this morning, but went back in, in the 70s, 80s, uh, 90s, and 2004. Each, each time we saw um, the, the values change dramatically, okay? And it wasn't like, when I'm, and I'm talking on a county level, uh, and then it breaks it down into the municipality level, but not neighborhood level, okay? And um, in, in the values went up a lot as far as the property value, okay? And then they do their magic, and um, uh, as far as their neighborhoods, they do their magic as far as the, the municipalities. And trust me, this is why we do a reassessment, okay? It's because it's about local governments. Unfortunately, we are we we are a commonwealth. We have um, how many uh, municipalities? 25, 2,700, somewhere around there. 2,500 2, municipalities, and they each have a governing body. And then you tack on the 502 school districts, right? That uh, 
in tax in the 67 counties. And um, it's just a cycle. It's the only way, well, for the most part, that government can operate by property taxes. We've approached the state many, many times. We, we need a better solution, and, and we can't. We, we just can't put our heads together and <clears throat> find the right solution. And there's reasons for that. I mean, listen, if you want, want to go to a 2% sales tax, guess what? People in the bordering communities like Philadelphia, well, they might lose business. They'll go do working, they'll go purchase their stuff in Delaware. Okay, I mean, so there's a lot of different uh, issues when, when you're talking about property tax. Okay, our job as commissioners is try to level that playing field, make sure everybody's house is valued at the correct value. Why? And, and yeah, you, you, you can absolutely ask any questions. I you need want. to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I gotta say, yes. Before you do anything with this vote, I think it's patently unfair for the board, who two members are going to retire, to put this over to the brand new commission that's coming in, and we're going to be stuck with a reassessment that is not going to be properly digested. Now, let me explain something here, please. Yeah. Because what's going on is. Everybody out here. Do you yes. want to go to the podium? Come sure. To the podium. I'll be happy to do that. Yeah, yeah you yeah. got to come to the podium. Announce your, announce your name. Rick Hauser of Loyal Sock Township. Now, gentlemen, everybody out here is dealing with by inflation. Everything's up between 10 and 50 percent. I don't care what you buy or where you go. And I just heard it said from the administration here in the last week, uh, we'll just get used to the higher prices now because inflation's slowing down. It's a big cost. And everybody out here, nobody's bills are going down. I don't care what side of the political aisle anybody's on. Your bills are up. Now we're going to look at a reassessment. Guess what everybody else has to do? We've got to tighten the belt up. We can't reassess our job. We can't reassess what business we have and say, oh, well, I need another 20 or 30 percent more money. I'll just vote it in. We can't do that. This is a real hardship, gentlemen. I'm going to say to you, seriously, with this reassessment situation, this needs to be voted down today. This needs to be pushed over to next year because this is the kind of rope-a-dope that people don't like. Okay, two of you guys are off the board. And I don't know what you're going to do, Scott, but the bottom line is, this smells like it's coming up for a vote and it's going to pass. So we're going to have a reassessment. And we look at this stuff and then, okay, so we're chasing the ball downhill again. And I'm just saying, the whole situation here is we can't grow the money the way government can. Not that you have printing presses, but a reassessment's going to come in here. And I don't think anybody's going to say that the price of your house is going to drop. It's not going to drop. It's going to go on up. And so then will the cost of keeping your own property. I know people that pay more for escrow and taxes than they did when they mortgaged their house right now. And that continues. And with the older population, it just gets worse. I'm just saying to you, it's time for fiscal responsibility and frugality. It's time to tighten up. A lot of people in here have to do the work where one dollar has to do the work at two, three, or ten we don't grow money like this. I'm going to ask you a question. Go ahead. You heard earlier from Brooke Wright. Here's a company that is saving 11000 I'm going to get my glasses on because this, this is a big number. $11,541.59. All right. They're saving. <laughs> we're refunding them $11,000. You know, and you know why we're doing it? Because they know they can go and appeal their taxes and get that. Now, let me ask you, and, and here's my issue, okay? This is, to me, is not about taxation. It's about leveling the playing field. And this is not level. Because you're, you're, you're their, value, business. their value is now 50% less than what it should be. And we're going to allow that to happen? No, because there's not one government that's going to hold the line on that and cut employees, 
cut services. They're not going to do it. Okay, so we better make sure that these people are paying their fair share. Do I like this? No. Why? Because I'm going to pay more in taxes. I know I am. I should be. My, my values are higher than what they're supposed to be. I mean, not supposed to be. They're higher than what they're being assessed at. Right. But we cannot continue for the last 12 years to allow this inequity to happen so that they pass it on to each and every household. You, you have to understand that that's what we're doing. We're trying to stop this inequity. Okay, and the inequity is... Jobs, can I wait one moment, please. Take that and multiply it by five years. Well, well, right. Every year they're going to get 11 million reduction. 11, after five years, or 11,000. They're going to they're get almost 60,000 after five years. Well, this, this, this is a business, but right? It's, but yeah. it's not just that. Because here's, here's what is bothersome. We get a whole lot of money. We get a whole lot of services in county government for their month for the money that we pay. I'm just being because I'm inside. Mm -hmm. And I and I think anybody any one of our constituents can sit here and say, when you pick up the phone and you call the county, somebody's there to answer the phone and get an answer to you. I think everybody can say that. We have a lot of responsibilities within this county government that we're closest to the people. Comes to school districts, county, and municipalities, you know what? Think about your school districts. Think about how the administrators that, too many administration, too much. Why are we sending our children to go play football an hour and a half, two hours away? That costs a lot of money in gas. It costs a lot of money. Let's educate. Let's put our focus back on what it's supposed to be well, and not the waste. We're, we're getting off of this. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we are. That's taxation. Right. All right. But you're talking about schools now. If we well, want to open well, that up and talk about the unions, no, no, you, no, want, that's you not, want to talk about where your about. money's going down a rabbit hole with the schools, that's another story. Well, that's, that's that's top absolutely. Of this. But let me but just say this. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. But okay. you're talking about businesses. <laughs> Why is it they always end up that this is always the reason why we have to do this? Well, these businesses are getting away with it. Why are they getting away with it? Why do they get such a deal? Why are we extending deals to people like this where we're going to do the same thing in a few years and say, well, hell, they, got, they were estimated so low or they didn't pay or this or that. we got to do another real reassessment. And it just feeds on itself. It's the law. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, can I just well, address a couple of points? Yeah. So, so the... the the businesses are not doing anything illegal. I didn't say they were. No, no, Somebody's not assessing them properly to start with, or we well, sure. would run into this. Well, no, the Rick problem is we comments. can't do a spot assessment. We cannot just go and say we're going to do a spot assessment on your business. It has to be everybody or nobody. So there, there are two different issues here. Tax increases and reassessment are as different as apples and oranges. Our ability, no, they really are. Our ability. What do you want to do a reassessment for, Rick? You want more money. No, no, no we don't. That's Listen, exactly no, what no, it comes Mr. to. Mr. Hauser. I was just told these guys are too low. No. What's the idea for doing the reassessment? No, Mr. Hauser, it's about equity. When Mr. Messer points out that they're going to not pay 11500 look over five years. We went through it at the last meeting that multiple businesses have come in. I calculated that in five years they're going to cut half a million dollars out of our revenue, out of county revenue. The same thing with the school districts. Now, even if we try to scrimp and save, it's very difficult to try to not spend revenue when the price of oil goes up, when everything goes up. Even if we're level spended here, we, right. we're not raising taxes, right? So there are two different issues, but it's really about an issue of equity. Personally, the two of us are going to pay more taxes. I'm going to pay more taxes. I own real estate. Okay, but it's the right thing to do. If people's, after reassessment, if the value of your home goes up, the millage comes down, and it can only be a difference of, is it 10% Brooke or 5%? 10%. But we still have a responsibility as elected officials to not spend money. So, so it doesn't absolve us from that, right? The, the millage comes down, you understand that, right? right? I, all right, well, I, what I would say is, no matter which way, the habit of government in all these situations never begets a lower bill. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. And in the end, we're going to end up paying more. Everybody. Thank you, going to end up Thank you for your comments. Absolutely. Thank you.
I just want to address one comment about the, okay. the concern that, that both Tom and Mr. Hauser had about this board dealing with it. You know, Commissioner Masser sat on a statewide <coughs> reassessment board for multiple years. Twelve. Twelve years with CK <coughs> around the state. There's no one in the county who has more understanding of reassessment than him. I have studied reassessment, as says Commissioner Metzger. You know, we, we're required. The one course commissioners are required to take has to do with reassessment. The new board coming in has to take a course in reassessment. I don't believe that it's, I think it's actually irresponsible of us if we leave office when we know there's a serious problem if we don't deal with it. Notwithstanding that both of us are going to pay. Do you know how many people have said to me, don't do reassessment because I'm going to pay more taxes? I mean, people who have a lot of money. That begets the person who has very, very little money. Because when the clerk comes in legally and gets its value reduced, and last week it was Coles, or last month it was Coles, and Brooke can give you the whole list of them. Collectively, when they come in and get their reduction, which they're allowed to do, Someone else has to pay the freight, even to keep us level, funded, to keep the prison going, to keep the 911 center going. We need a certain amount of money to do those things. So even when we work our darndest and employees work their darndest, you come in and over five years they cut half a million dollars out of the budget. What do we do? Just because they're, they got their, their assessment. So there are two different apples and oranges. Reassessment taxes. We always, as elected officials, have a responsibility to keep taxes down. I, I you were, you were in the middle of your comments. Do you have anything else you want to yeah, add? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Because I think this is probably one of the most important things about the reassessment. Is that I have a property here. And um, my assessed value is 70000 We do the reassessment. And um, it's now a value of 200000 now that doesn't mean that I'm going to get taxed on $200,000 as it is today. And that's pretty important to understand. Okay, because this house went up 130,000. This house went up 50,000. Okay? I've got two properties. Doesn't I don't even care where they're at. Okay? I'm not even going after the neighborhoods in this particular but what happens? The values of all our properties are going to increase dramatically. That's what happens in a reassessment. Okay, the product, it, it could go as high as five hundred million to a billion. <clears throat> I don't know, but but we will get a, a real value. Now here's where it makes a big difference: is that this house here. That was assessed at two hundred thousand, and this house here that was assessed at fifty thousand. I mean, one hundred thirty thousand more, and this one at fifty thousand more. The millage is going to drop, but because the assessed value of all the properties in Lycoming County, right, is high, when a school district or municipality or a county has to raise its tax, right. It doesn't have to raise it a mil. It may only have to raise it 0.2 mils or 0.1 mil. So what does that mean? This guy here is going to pay more than this guy here. And that's what we talk about fairness. If I left a house go in downtown, well, well in, in a community or a neighborhood in Williamsport, and they're all about the same values, right? These people are going to make out. They're, they're, because the taxation won't be a mill. It will be 0.1 mill. Because the values have increased overall. And that's where the fairness comes in. Not so much that you're going to get double your taxes, and I don't know. I don't know where I might be, okay? I'm assuming that if I, as I look through the history of taxation, not taxation, reassessment, okay, 
we, we find out that yes, it is a third, a third, and a third, and I showed, I, I think, did I give you that information this morning? Okay, you see areas, Jersey Shore was a good example, was a great example, where they actually see rest revenue after the reassessment. And they had to go to court to try to make up the revenue. It happens. It, that's what a reassessment does. And hopefully that doesn't happen, you know, too much, but you see it. You see a lot of red in those papers where it, it worked in reverse. And I'm not sure if I'd want my, you know, I, I look at it this way. I'm, I'm an investor, and if my value goes up, guess what happens? My equity goes up, and guess what happens? I can leverage my equity, right? I can leverage my equity. I can get more out of my house. I can ask for more money from the bank. I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm at the age where I don't know what I want to do, but I'm just saying there's, uh, there's advantages and there are disadvantages to it. So um, this is in our budget. The budget has the right to be opened again. If you want to call it a smoke screen, whatever you want to, I, I certainly want. I have advocated a reassessment ever since I walked in this office. Okay, because I know it needs to be done and it should be done every four to five years. Always. Always. But, and then it's a lot less expensive to do. But uh, to say that I'm railroad, no, that's, that's, that's not correct. Uh, you can go back on the records and you can everybody knows that I'm, I'm a firm believer in a, in a reassessment and then if, if they want to change it in January so be it I'm going to feel like I did what I was supposed to do Fisher, anything you want to add? <coughs> okay so um, here, one second here's where I'm at with this um, I, I said it a couple weeks ago timing is everything everything in life. I, I hear the arguments for reassessment. I agree with a lot of the arguments, but I can't see a reassessment this time due to the economy. People are hurting so bad right now. Interest rates are out of control. <coughs> Inflation really hasn't come down that much. Pennsylvania is number 50 out of 50 for groceries, highest groceries across the country. Go to the grocery store, buy some groceries. You know, the men that let the women do the shopping, say to your, say to your sweetheart, I'm going to go do the grocery shopping this week. Give me the list. You'll be astonished what you walk out and how little you have in that bag for what you pay. Mm -hmm. Colorado and Pennsylvania is the two highest. I've talked to the seniors, and I'm not saying this is going to affect the seniors, but I've talked to seniors who are concerned about it. Since COVID, the houses are overinflated. I'm worried about the crash coming back down and lowering them again. <coughs> the price of the homes. I don't look for our economy to get any better next year. I think it's going to be worse. And I think in an upscale economy, it's an economy that shows promise, this needs to be visited at that time. I understand it's three years out. We all know. I had a, a news reporter say, well, how do you... How do you know what it's going to be like in three years? We don't. But I don't see how it's going to be much worse. It could be, but I don't see how much it could be much worse. I kind of, I lived in the 70s as a teenager. I saw what it did to the housing market as my dad was a builder. I remember sitting in line at the gas pumps for two hours. because the gas source sitting there in a station wagon. Wondering when we were going to get gas before the pump ran out. We're not too far away from that. We really aren't. Interest rates were a lot worse back then, no doubt about it. But they're not coming down. Things aren't good right now. Um, I sat down with my two colleagues last last week and I said, I put out, you, you can, we can table this till next year and let the new commissioners and myself go around <coughs> to, to the public Go to the eastern end of the county, the western end of the county, take Brook with us, educate the public about the need for it, get more education out there, so that when it does eventually happen, it's going to eventually happen at some point, that the public 
would be much more educated on it and could accept it at that point. <coughs> um, I left that with my colleagues. They can decide what they want to today. That was my, my solution. If they decide to vote in favor of it today, that's, that's their choice. They're elected official. But at this point, I cannot be in favor of it due to what's going on in our own county. Um, you know, I talked to a state legislator last week, a former state legislator last week about this. Um, it was actually his suggestion about doing this education throughout the community. He says, I know families over here where I live that couldn't even buy their kids Christmas trees. You know, he says, couldn't even get Christmas presents. I pulled out of the parking lot here last Wednesday. What in the world's going on with the street? There was a line from almost all the way down to, it was on Court Street. It was almost all the way down, it was almost halfway down to 4th Street. And I thought, well, maybe there was an accident or something. Came back from lunch and the line was just as long. I left at the end of the day, it was just as long. It was the Salvation Army. People were in need. They were going there to get the stuff for Christmas. That line never shrank for, I bet you, half a day. People are hurting. There's people going to food banks right now in this county that you would never have an idea that are going to food banks. Your neighbors. They're your neighbors. They're hurting. So on good conscience, as much as we need this right now, I can't vote in favor of it because of the economy. I, I want you to, uh, I want you to just reflect on what you said. As much as we need this right now, as much and as I'm we going, need it, but and not I'm going right to tell now, you, Scott. I'm going to just tell you because this is a debate. This is. is about transparency. Right. That you make no action, right? Is that going to stop the people from raising the taxes? The, the, the taxing bodies from well, raising taxes next year. Let me add to this. Well, no, please tell tell me. Uh, answer the question. Will will the school districts raise taxes? Yeah, that's, yes. That's and instead of raising the taxes one mil, they're going to raise them point two mil. You you know, don't confuse this as Commissioner Marabito says. This is about the value of the parcels, and this is about being taxed fairly. And this is about that $11,000 that we're not going to gain in some other, no, not some other, every other household will be paying for this. We all are. We all are. Whether we do this assessment or not. This is not going to stop LeClerc or anybody else from coming in and doing a, an appeal again. No, no, no. I, I, I want to finish my statement. I want to finish my statement. The problem is deeper than a reassessment. Right? It's much deeper. We could do a reassessment <coughs> or next year or the year after, okay? Those levels, though, that, that millage is going to drop. But guess what happens? It goes right back up yep. because of the body who's responsible, whether it's a school district, whether it's a county, whether it's the municipality, has to stop the spending. Has to stop the wasteful spending. And until they stop that, it's never going to, it's never going to change. So it's responsibility of those elected officials in those roles that even when the reassessment does happen someday, whether it's now or next year or the year after, they have to look at it and say, listen, we have to live within our budget. We can't just pass it on to the taxpayer again and then pass it on again next year because that's what's going to happen. The spending has to stop. So, so during this whole couple years, especially with COVID and the, and the workforce, right? Have we not increased our, our, our workforce costs? We had to for retention. Right. And did we make significant cuts in employment uh, uh, over the last three years? Some some we planned with the department heads and some we didn't plan just because of COVID, right? But we still increased our costs. And How do you pay for that? How do you how do we pay for diesel that was at one time two dollars and twenty five cents and now we're paying five dollars a gallon? Over the, how do you pay for that? You you have to raise costs. You have to raise. 
I mean, I've operated a business for 37 years. And trust me, I charge more today than I do 37 years ago. Why? My labor went up. My insurance was went up. Everything goes up. And it's just being responsible or cutting what you need to cut. Now, I can agree. There are some places that need to cut more. Okay, but it's inevitable costs go up. You know, and now you got to find ways of creating revenue. And we don't want to do the taxation. We don't want to do, uh, I don't want to pass a, a one mil increase. Uh, not at the county. We've done what we could do, and we're very conservative. No, a reassessment's not going to fix spending problems. So okay. if, I, if I can just address a couple of points. The, um, I think it's really important for us to look at this over five years, because the example of Leclerc, and the example of Coles and who else came to us. Those reductions, when there is no reassessment, those reductions repeat themselves year after year after year. And before you know it, after five years, even though you're trying to cut spending, your revenue has gone down a <coughs> huge amount, a huge amount. I think one of the reasons people are hurting is because there is not a fair taxation system in this county. When, when companies can come in and get a reduction, but the little old lady who's a widow, who's living on a fixed income, still, as Commissioner Becerra says, has to pay a millage increase in taxes, that is a huge bite out of her budget. And so part of the reason our families are struggling is because the tax system is out of whack. When the, when the common level ratio is 0.52, and next year it's going to be 0.48, it means that a company coming in is going to get over a 50% reduction in their assessed value. Just off the bat. Just off the bat. Because by statute, they have, we have to give them the common level ratio. I'm not sure everyone understands that. We have to reduce what their assessed value is. The typical homeowner cannot afford to get an appraisal done and come in and seek the reduction. But as I experienced when we sat on the board, there are law firms that just do, I'm not attacking the law firms, it's, it's a business. They go in and they go around all to every county in the state and they say, listen, your common level ratio, Mr. Marabito, the common level ratio in your community is 0.48. I can go in and file some papers, you get a, an assessment done, I can get your reduction in your property taxes. Why don't you take it? So, it's really, Part of the reason we didn't act sooner is because when the common level ratio was at 0.75, I did not believe it was prudent to spend the amount of money it was going to take to get the reassessment done, to have it turn around and probably within the first year drop from 1 down to 0.9. That's typically what happens. It's now at the point where we're almost on life support. At 0.48 next year, we're on life support. It's our responsibility to spend the money. It's going to take three years to get that reassessment done. Right, Brooke, is that correct? 30 months. 30, 30 months, two and a half years. Commissioner, when we had the uh, last reassessment, not the one in 2012, the previous one, Brooke has shared the common level ratios, I think down to 0 0.28, 2.6 I think it was. That would be life support. What, what was it at the last one in 2004? No, it was before that. 2004, it was 69%. Yeah. 0.69. I think it was back in 88 when it was down. You're talking back in the 80s. I can't. Yeah. I think it was, you had put on well, there. It was 0.2 yeah. something. But right. But the, the 80s, only difference is back then the, the state had a different. Than fuels. Yeah. The state had a, the state tax equalization board had a different mechanism for calculating the common level ratio. So in any, whether it's life support, to me it's pretty serious when, when you can come in. And again, we have to look over a five year period to truly understand the impact of that reduced taxes. So it isn't something that uh, we're doing just you know willy nilly or at the last minute. It's something that needs to be done. But again, we said seven million was the value of that property. Yeah. They came in at six, at six point seven million. Right. The assessed value was five million. Right. And they appealed their taxes and got it for less than what they were paying originally. Right. This is a game. Right. You know, and if you don't if you don't like it, it's the law. If you don't like it, well then join them. And I can tell you, go appeal your, you, you have a right to appeal your taxes. I'm well aware of that. Okay. But I will say this. 
if it's been so long since we've had this reassessment, it's not going to make any too much difference if it kicks into the new year, gentlemen. No, you're right. You're without right. any vote today. No, the difference is this, Mr. Hauser. You're bringing in two new commissioners who have to understand 26 different departments in the county, 11 elected officials, 550 full-time employees, 60 or so part-time employees, security needs that the sheriff has, security needs that the court system has, how to make a prison work, how to keep from getting sued, and you know, there's a lot of things they that they can need to also do. figure out how to do assessments when they when the time comes. They will they take, can do that too. Absolutely, they will take the course. But the question is, time is a ticking. If it's going to take us two and a half years, it's going to be well into the end of their term. Okay, Mr. Dent, you had something you wanted to add. You, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, if you come up and then we'll we'll finish with you. Uh, Jim Dunn, Armstrong Township. Uh, I'll be brief. I didn't come here for this, but since I'm here, I'll add to it. I'd like to thank the commissioners for taking on the uh, reassessment. Now, my properties have gone up. I have a couple of properties, and they've gone up several times in the past few years. And you know, no one likes to, to pay it. And as Scott said, you know, we all feel it, and, and there, you know, it's, it's true. But I, I think it takes tremendous courage for this board to finally do this. I've been in local government for 18 years, and this has been on the agenda the entire time. And no one has taken the courage to do it. And what it plays out, it doesn't necessarily play out in this big tax increase. Like the numbers are, are a little confusing. But what it does is it creates, it eliminates a lot of inequity. And as a local government official for 18 years, we fought several different tax inequity. We have similar properties with three different assessments that vary by millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And what that does is that impacts local government's ability to do the things it needs to do, your roads, your bridges, your administrative government tasks. And the same thing for the school. They have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in admit professional services fees to try and justify these inequities. And it isn't necessarily to target the people with the inappropriate assessments, but it's to make it fair for the other people who are paying maybe a disproportionate amount. It equals out, it takes several years for this to occur, and if this board is willing to do this, it takes the burden off the next board of commissioners to govern in an appropriate way without the stress of the re-election tax reassessment. And, 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 and you may think that that's not important, but it's very important for them to be able to govern effectively and have a burden removed from them. It's a lot of courage. It, as I see this, you know, it, and now that I'm saying it too, we'll all take quite a bit of grief from quite a bit, quite a few people for speaking in favor of it. But quite honestly, and I didn't come here for this. It is a long time coming, and the window of opportunity, the, the window of time before this actually is effective on people. You know, you have to, you have to be optimistic. You have to believe that things will be better than. And uh, I'd like to thank the board for putting it on here and enduring it and, and, and taking the courage to remove the burden from the next board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who loses the right of appeal on a reassessment? Anybody? They automatically, if the board denies it, right, so it comes, it comes before the board of assessment review. We deny it, they automatically have a right to go to court. Right. And then it's decided by a judge. Right. Now, so a lot of times... So the same people who are being cited as appealing their tasks and getting it lowered, they'll still be able to do that next go-around. They reassess and they can still do the same thing. But the difference is they won't get the common level ratio of point <coughs> They will. They won't get it because by law, the common level ratio, once the reassessment is done, becomes one. After a certain amount of time, it fluctuates. The stat, state tax equalization board looks at our fair market values, the data goes in, and the numbers get crunched. At a certain point, if it's point 0.9, they're weighing the cost of an appraisal and the cost of an attorney against what they're actually going to benefit in a tax reduction. Uh, Brooks' office often negotiates. Once the board uh, refuses to grant it, right, denies it, they go to court. Between the time going to court, her office will sometimes negotiate a settlement. But I sincerely think that the number of, of people, uh, number of companies is going to go down. Because if the board denies it, now they're facing not just the legal fee of coming before the board with a lawyer. They have to file in court. And it becomes 
a cost-benefit ratio. How much are we really going to save? Well, the bottom line is, is that the cost of doing this, every time I've gone to any sort of a reassessment arrangement like this, it's always the same citations are used. There's businesses that are not paying up, so we got to do the reassessment. It, it's the same thing over and over again. And the public at large and the people that pay the freight in the town mostly are the ones that bleed out on the road for this stuff. And I'm just telling you, that's the way this is going to end up. And it's no problem if we've waited so long to do this reassessment that it makes no difference if it happens this next year. Okay, thank you for your comments. All right, so we have a, a motion on the floor to vote and approve a countywide reassessment. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, roll call. Roll, roll, roll call. Yeah. Roll call, Commissioner Massar. Yes. Commissioner Mirabito. Yes. Merry Christmas, fellas. Commissioner Metzger. Nay. Carried two to one. Okay, next. All right. Uh, 6.4. Commissioner uh, seeking your approval uh, on the agreement with Park Terrace Impact Investors. Um, this is a 2024 budgeted item and it is pending final legal review. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. Second. I'll, I'll second. Okay, comments. Another topic we've discussed the last several meetings. Yeah. And uh, we've continued to have meetings with the Arc Terrace and the city, um, all the partners, the chamber, and uh, First Community Foundation. We have representatives today from the audience. We've had them speak in the past regarding our Terrace and uh, moving ahead. So we have a motion in a second. Any comments from my two colleagues? So, again, you know, I think it's important for us not to look at this as this is the end of the year, Maravito and Macer are leaving and they're voting on it. Is Government is a Please continuous. Please. Thank you. Government is a continuous process of trying to, quite frankly, deal with problems and build a community that people want to come to. That's what I see my job as an elected official is. You know, one of the things that I've tried to learn in life is that life always presents you with problems. And the question is, are we equipping our children to deal with them? Are we equipped to deal with them? The biggest problem we face in this community right now is depopulation. It's the loss of population. And we may have debates about whether we're losing population. You might get on the I-80 and say, my gosh, there's more cars on here than there were 10 years ago. But research after research, whether it's the Center for Rural PA, which Senator Yaw chairs, or whether it's the other entities that have looked into it, rural America is losing population. And with the loss of population, the tax burden falls on a smaller number of people, which is one of the reasons people are also struggling. Because when the tax burden falls on a smaller number of people, there's a smaller number of parcels. We've done, and Commissioner Metzger read off a number of things we've done to try to stimulate the development of housing through various programs to bring infrastructure, water and sewer to the communities to build houses. The chamber brought us the proposal as a result of some of their members, Brent Fish and others, who have been actively involved in noticing that the people who are buying property seem to be leaving. They seem to be going to Union County. So our job is to try to figure out how can we attract capital investment. We know that Amazon and companies like that will go to the urban areas. They go to the suburban areas. Rural America is starved for capital investment. And as much as we try locally, investors such as Mr. Mister and Mr. Metzger and myself and people in this audience, as much as we try to reinvest profit money we made, it's hard to aggregate large sums of money for capital investment at one time. For all we say about the uh, ARPA, it injected $22 million into the county, $25 million into the city, that we put to good use, fixing water and sewer lines in Jersey Shore that were, how old? 110 years old, right? 108 years old. 108 years old, to the point where when the hospital needed water and West Pharmaceutical needed water, somebody had to turn off their taps. 
That's a ridiculous way for us to expect this community to grow. So our job, and looking at our terrace, the First Community Foundation brought this to us. And they brought and they said, look, if the chamber puts in 1.25 and the foundation puts in 1.25 million and the county puts in 1.25 million and the city puts in 1.25 million, this investment group will put in 20 million. So that's 25 million of capital investment. That's as much more money than we got through ARPA. Now, we have vetted it. The three of us have vetted it. We have gone around to these qualified opportunity zones, which only exist in Williamsport. And by the way, this is President Trump's tax bill 2017. This is not some liberal uh, or whatever. I, I shouldn't even use that word. It's not some of whom are in the audience don't favor the other person. This is, a, this is a legislation put together by the man that many people in the community love for. <laughs> you know, we love so the point is that it's a tax opportunity for people to invest. We started in nine months ago examining this problem. Some will say, well, why are you doing it at the last minute? It's not the last minute. It's been nine months of vetting, of driving around the community, of looking at where the investments could go, of numerous phone calls where we said, we do not want an abortion clinic built in this community with this money. We do not want low-income housing built in this community with this money. And the investors have said, we hear you, we're not going to do those things, right? Now, do we know exactly, exactly what they're going to do? No. And the reason we don't know, now listen, just listen, I see some in the audience shaking their heads is because they need to actually do a tremendous amount of research. But to move ahead and do that research, we know what they are going to do. They are going to invest in a profit-making, property tax-paying, private entity business that is hopefully going to create jobs and create economic activity in the community. And we hope that putting $25 million into that is going to create a synergy with other investors, some of whom are local investors and some of whom are, are out-of-town investors, coming in saying, hey, we're going to invest in this community. But I can tell you one thing guaranteed. By the way, this is Act 13 money, so it's money we got from the gas drilling. I can tell you one thing. If we don't do something to jumpstart our community, if we don't fight to bring people here, if we don't fight to increase the population, we're going to die. And I'll tell you, I am not a person who sits around and watches things die because we want our kids to be here and we want our families to stay here so we're asking for your support today and to understand that if we want to claw out of this depopulation that's gone on we've gone from 120,000 people to 114 we're projected to go to 112,000 this is a good move and it's a it's a it's a good move because it involves many parts of the community. It involves our private sector, our grant-making foundation, our businesses in the chamber. And I, unless I'm wrong on this, I see Mr. Fink in the audience. The chamber voted in a secret, the chamber board voted to send it to the executive committee 20 to 4? Roughly about Roughly 20 to 4 in a secret ballot vote. That shows there's tremendous support among the uh, the business community. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, what I what I wish was here was a, a good solid document. Okay. Um, we we placed restrictions on there that did not make it into that document yet, such as they cannot take advantage of a, a Keystone Opportunity Zone tax, or they can't. Even if they're within a LERDA, you know, you know what LERDAs are, they cannot take advantage of that. We are not going to let them take advantage of that. If if that were to happen, it's all. It's period. It's all. Um, there's, we put some restrictions on there that's, listen, they'll do their due diligence. And if they can't find a way to, to make that 15 plus uh, percent return or higher, they're not doing it. This is typically brick and mortar stuff that, that happens. Um, and that's how we build revenue without increasing taxes. Pretty simple economics, pretty simple management. If we can 
invest 1.25 million as a county and bring in 25 million in brick and mortar, which we will probably project our return on investment within six years, right? Well, we'd be a fool. We'd be a fool. He'd vote us out of office for not bringing in taxes. That's that's just that simple. Without having to raise taxes or bringing in revenue and opportunities, it's it's to me it's a no-brainer. And and as long as those restrictions are within that document, and it'll be up to you. You know when they they come in through the attorneys, the new commissioners, um, you'd be a bit foolish not to, uh, especially. In Williamsport, it's the only area, as uh, Commissioner Maravino said, there's three federal opportunity zones. They're all within Williamsport, and Williamsport is um, our county seat. You're seeing um, you're, it's it's a difficult time for Williamsport. Uh, just look at nobody ran for mayor other than the mayor. What's that telling you? You know, who wants these positions? They're difficult, and so our job as leaders is to do what we need to do. And uh, pretty easy decision for me. Well, it was a lot more difficult decision for me because, uh, you know, when you when you proceed to give somebody $1.25 million and you don't know what they're gonna do with it, I think you have to have a brain in your head, first of all, and make that decision. So as I've researched this, and I've been on, I've been in the meetings, I went on the ride around the community, I've been open-minded to this. And I go back and forth, go back and forth. Um, but I've realized that my two colleagues have, have really pushed for this. And they, they're much, very much in favor of more so than I am. Uh, because we don't know the unknown. A couple different things have, have uh, been lightning over the past uh, two weeks. We had a gentleman here a couple weeks ago, a retired state trooper, who spoke to a, a trooper friend of his up in the Erie area. And uh, he spoke very favorably about what's going on in the area. Uh, he says it's been nothing but positive. So that was very encouraging. However, each area is different. Um, so as I met with, with um, I think we had two meetings, Jen, since, since we had our last public meeting with our terrace. Um, what can we do to put restrictions on? How can we make this work for everybody? So the restrictions are no low income housing. That'll be written in the document. They want to bring market rate housing, we welcome that. That's not low income. Our two main areas are, are housing and, and uh, child care. We emphasize to them we really need child care help in this area. So you know to explore that. The other thing is they have to own the they have to own the entity, whatever they whatever they have whatever they build, they have to own it for ten years before they can sell it. That's part of the restrictions. That's part of their their, their setup. Park Terrace. Well, I don't want to wait for 10 years to see something pop up. So we talked and we got it down to three years. Five? I thought it was three. I thought the document said five, but maybe you're... I preferred three. I, I, I'm not sure what your document said, but... Well, there's a, there's a little confusion here. First yeah. of all, the 10 years is it has nothing to do with right. how long it's going to take them to, to start develop something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Then it's it's yeah. typically within three years. Yeah. So I, that's what I prefer to have it done within three years. And if we don't see something in three years, then and then that that, that would be it. Um, the other thing is worth. I'm here to protect the county's tax dollars. This, this is actually tax dollars. It's Act 13 monies. But I'm here to protect that money, and and I wanted to know where we were going to be as lien holders. So we're going to be the second, second line. I, I had to play poker with uh, the chamber. I wanted to be first, but the chamber won, won bend, and they, they stayed first. And, and I can I, I can understand their point of view. So we we agreed to be second. The city agreed to be third, and and then first community foundation we agreed to be fourth. So I think we put safe holds in there to protect our monies, um, at, and at the same time we're going to have. Um, committee with with uh, with volunteers that will sit on that committee two from each entity that have buy-in on what would be recommended for the communities uh, which is important 
to hear from, from those, those individuals for each one of those four entities that have that buy-in and then bring it back to the respective, respective boards. Uh, so I think by us putting the safeguards in place, it's much more favorable at this point. Um, and then the report we heard from Mary, which was very good. Um, so that would be my comments at this time. Is there any public comment? Any public comment on it? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to know, is this Arcticus? Or are they going to have anything to do with the light coming mall that's sitting down no. there? No. Do we know the no. name of that entity? That's FarmVest. Fan, fan best. Fan best. I say farm. Fan best. So we're not aware of what they're going to be putting in down there yet. At, at the light coming mall. They're still in the works of doing certain things regarding the infrastructure. Okay. And they're working with different developers on leases. Okay. They couldn't do anything until they actually owned it. Right. But there's a lot of a lot of issues with the infrastructure, with the water, the sewer, the roads down there that they're currently working on and getting that taken care of. And then they're in the meantime they're in talks with, with different developers on the leases. And the name Articus, when I read that in an email, it just reminded me of an extinct name of a dinosaur. I didn't know whether that was someone's real last name or made up. It's actually the Arc Impact Program W L L L C. And I think Arc Terrace is probably a shortened version of that. It's the name of the company that invest the funds, that creates the, the tax fund. So this money has to be spent in accordance with federal law, right? Because it's the federal tax opportunity zone. So they can't just, like the concern that had been expressed before about an abortion clinic or a casino or whatever, they can't just spend it any way they want. There's restrictions in the, in the federal statute as to how they can invest this money. So it's not going to have anything to do with DEI. Diversity, Diversity equity, equity, inclusion. inclusion. Right. It, they do attempt to uh, in, do social impact, which is when they passed the federal law, President Trump and the folks who wrote the law wanted to impact socially positive things. Right? That's what they wanted. They wanted a social positive investment for people who were looking for a tax break. So this was under President Trump, Correct. Who was doing good for the country? It's not under Joe Bob. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I would try to stress that every every part of government builds on what people did before. Whether it's county commissioners standing on the shoulders of the people twenty years ago who had the foresight to put in the river walk or 50 years ago who had the foresight to put in the landfill. And President Trump, President Biden, President Obama all stood on the shoulders of other people who tried to make the country a better place. One thing about both all these things that we're doing, FAMFEST, the reassessment, this. When our elected state representatives, two of whom are here today, Representatives Ham and Representative Flick, and when Senator Yaw is in Harrisburg and they're fighting for money for this community, when they can point to the positive things that are being done locally by us to try to pull ourselves up, it makes it a hell of a lot easier for them to fight for our cap, it's a great point. for H2O money, for all of the grants that are dished out at the state level. And when we don't take these actions, we make them go in with their hands tied behind their back because some other county commissioners are taking forward-looking action and their state reps and senators are able to say hey <coughs> our community is doing this Senator Yaw has brought a tremendous amount of money back to this community in our cap grants represent Flick and Ham the the H2O money that just came back we need to help them we need to give them the tools <coughs> ma'am as we we did the uh, the agreement with the fam vest we protected the money Sure, we were the first lien holder on the bank. We made sure that it was a loan. We made sure that you know, the land's going to come to us if something happens. We'll own that land. Same thing with here. We're making sure safeguards are put in place to protect the money the best we can. But we have to do things to kickstart the economy in our area, and because it's 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 gone downhill drastically. 
We've seen the mall. We've seen the stores move out. We've seen businesses move out. And, and these are two ways that we can bring that back. We have to, at the same time, not just give it to them, but put the safeguards in there <coughs> so that if something does go south, at least we're protected. Okay? All right. Well, the motion. Roll call. Commissioner Massar? Yes. Commissioner Miravino? Yes. Commissioner Mesker? Yes. Okay. Moving forward, 6.5, 6.4. All right. I hope so. The commissioner seeking your approval on the reappointment of the following individuals to the Lycoming County Water and Sewer Advisory Board. John Gramlin, effective 1 1 2024 through 12 31 2028, five year term. James Carpenter, effective 1 1 2024 through 12 31 2028, first five year term. Okay. Motion to approve these two gentlemen. I'm I'll move to approve. I second. Aye. 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 We want to thank them for stepping forward for you know, serving on these on this um, very important um, board that's in county here. All right, action item 6.6. .6. This is the one that uh, we added. Uh, seeking your approval on the collection agreement uh, between the county and the Lycoming County Detective FOP bargaining unit. Uh, for a term of 1 January 2022 through 12 31 2025. Can, can I make a suggestion instead of changing all the numbers, could we make this like 6.5 feet? I'll, I'll make that motion. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, no, that's I'll withdraw my motion. Yeah, I got it under control. Okay, he's got okay. it under control. <laughs> So we got to change every number. That's okay. Thank you. you guys know. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. Ah, second. All fair side. Aye. Aye. Security. And I want to thank uh, the director and Mr. Wiley for working on uh, the agreement and, and the county detectives for for their work. It's um, very necessary and dangerous work, and we thank them for what they do on a daily basis. All right, move on to now 6.7. Uh, Commissioner seeking your approval on the agreement with John S. O'Brien, the second MD. Uh, this is an expert medical witness uh, for the DA. Uh, this is in an amount not to exceed 50,000. It's a 2024 budget item. Motion? I'll move to approve. Second. All there, sir. Aye. 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 So, Aye. 6.8. Um, we already did that one. <coughs> so 6.9, Commissioner seeking your approval on the agreement with Geisinger uh, Clinic in the amount not to exceed $25,000. Uh, this is again for expert medical witness uh, for the VA, um, and it is a 2024 budget item. Motion, I move to approve. I'll second. All there, sorry. Aye. Aye. Uh, Commissioner seeking approval on the agreement with Sean McLaughlin, MD. He's the uh, prison's medical director in the amount of uh, $6,725 a month. This is a 2024 budget item. Motion. I move to approve. I second. On your side. Aye. The allocation of funds to Pennsylvania College of Technology uh, and the Community Arts Center in the amount of $20,000. This is a Act 13 grant. Motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All favor say aye. Aye. Quick comment there. We want to thank Penn College for, and, and I know Commissioner Mister, you've been a strong advocate, and uh, we've all striven to support it because having the Community Arts Center downtown uh, really comes a place to go for people, so our thanks to Penn College for that. Uh, 6.12, seeking your approval on the emergency resolution 23-31 for the purchase of chemicals from Croft Landfill Technologies Incorporated. This 
for flubber treatment in the leachate wells. I know that sounds a little weird, but uh, it's actually an algae biological issue and it required some serious chemicals to take care of. In the amount of $18,762. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. Second. Jason, you have any comments on that? Uh, Commissioner, it's just a, uh, like the uh, director said, it's biological growth that we're seeing in some of our wells and our pumps. And this is the major topic that most landfills are having discussions with this to what is why this all of a sudden coming out. So we uh, appreciate the emergency resolution because we got to get the chemicals in, clean the pumps out, and try to get a handle on them. I guess we call it the black goo or the flubber. There's really no technical other term for it around the landfills, but. Thank you very much. Okay. Walker, aye. 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 All right. Uh, Commissioner seeking your approval to reject all bids received for polling place PDA renovations. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. Yeah, second. No. What did you say? Motion? Yeah. Okay. I'll move to approve. Second. Uh, Director Horst, any comments? Not, not really. Just we're we're proceeding on the advice of our architect. Uh, we want to take a take another stab at it, see if we can get some different bids. Uh, some of the figures in the in the bids were we didn't think made sense because there were some changes that were made uh, uh, during the bidding process uh, to some of the designs. And when we do it again, there may be some additional facilities included because we've already started looking. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner seeking your approval. Hey, on I'll say. Hold their side. Aye. 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 Period. Okay, thank you. 6.14, uh, seeking your approval on the amendment to your agreement with Rogers Uniform. This is a 2024 budget. Okay, motion. I move to approve. I second. Hold their side. Aye. 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 So period. Um, 6.15, seeking your approval uh, for the amendment to the agreement with Tammy Eichner. And this is a 24 budget item. Okay. Motion. I'll move to approve. I second. All groups aye. 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 Chairman, I want to acknowledge the former Commissioner Ralph with us today also. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, Join us. Good to see you. I didn't even see you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm back here. Yeah. Be educated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 616, Commissioner seeking your approval on the amendment to agreement with ATC uh, Group Services doing business as BCM engineers. In the amount of thirty-four thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars, this is a 20, twenty-four budget item. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. I second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Six point seventeen. Bro. Good morning, Commissioner. I'm here seeking your approval for an amendment to the tax claim solicitor contract. The price changes for partners is going from one hundred twenty-five dollars to one hundred fifty per hour. And it's going for associates $100 to $135 per hour and $75 per hour for paralegals. Okay, motion. I'll, I'll move to approve. I, I, we were, I was going to give our uh, solicitors a, oh. a, a slight. Well, it needs a second, right? Yeah. <laughs> We appreciate I'll second. It. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate the the work that they do. I thought you were going to say the fair and reasonable. Work. Right. It was. It is. It is. Thank you. Well, we got a vote on it. You guys just voted for reassessment. You want to make sure they're around. <laughs> <laughs> right. You you got to ask for a vote on. Oh, a motion. I made a motion. Okay, <clears> second. I second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 618 and 19, Beth, you're online. I am. Good morning, Commissioner. Morning. Good morning. Uh, the 
first item is a um, revenue item with Verizon. It is a full lease at one of our tower sites. This is an expert five years from 2023 to 2028, and it's a $500 lease for the using one of our polls. It will renew after five years, every five years with a 10% interest. Okay, and it's a 2024 budget item? It is a 2024 budget item. Yeah. Motion. I move to approve. Uh, second. On their side. Aye. And my next item on the agenda is our agreement with Sullivan County. This is going to be for their um, annual dispatch <coughs> that we do for them. And for 2024, the rate increases to 102,790. Okay. This is for the next three years. It will renew every three years at the amount of um, 3%. And they will pay that quarterly. This is a 2024 budget item. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. On their side. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Six twenty twenty and twenty one with Alexa. Good morning. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon, now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I have two items today. The first is action item six twenty is to approve the acceptance of the 2024 DEP CAP Coordinator and CAP Implementation Grant Award in the amount of $205,466. Acceptance of this grant will be crucial for continuing the county's clean water goals to reduce nutrient and sediment pollution our local waterways. Um, funding for the implementation part of this grant will be allocated towards two stream restoration projects and will also help expand the Cover Crop Initiative Program in partnership with our Lycoming County Conservation District. Okay. Motion. I'll move to approve. Uh, second. Any comments? On the side. Aye. 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 Uh, the second one is action item 6.21, the Miranda of Understanding for the Five County Regional Solid Waste Plan update between Columbia, Lycoming, Montour Union, and Snyder County. This joint regional solid waste plan update between the five county assures waste capacity is available in the region for at least the next 10 years and ensures the county stay compliant with the PA DEP solid waste regulations. Um, this understanding for on the agenda today um, outlines the agreement for the five counties to participate and also cost share in the plan update. The other four counties have signed the agreement and grant funding has already been secured to handle the additional cost. Okay, motion. I move to approve. Uh, second. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. 622 through 628, Willie. Good afternoon. Senior approval for the subject recipient monitoring agreement with YWCA, no single PA, an amount of $100,000 for the 2023 fair payments. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All in favor sign? Aye. Aye. 6.23, senior approval for the sub recipient monitor agreement with Greater Light Coming Habitat for Humanity. For their home preservation project, an amount of $25,000, also 2023 air funds. Motion. I move to approve. A second. All in favor say aye. Aye. 6.24. Senior approval for the service of monitoring agreement with Greater Lake Coming Habitat for Humanity, the Scott Street project, an amount of $25,000, 2023 air funds. A motion. Move to approve. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 6.25, senior approval for the sub-recipient monitor agreement with Lycoming Clinton, Joiner Board, an amount of $52,000 through the 2023 fair funds. Motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor aye. 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 6.26, senior approval for the sub-recipient monitor agreement with American Rescue Workers, an amount of $100,000 through the 2023 fair funds. I'll move to approve. Yes. All favor say aye. 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 6.27, senior approval of the service to be in monitor agreement, the STEM Inc., the master lease program, and amount of $200,000 through the 2023 fair plan. A motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All favor say aye. Aye. 6.28,
care funds. So yes. We just recently approved it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. I'm going to ask for a personal privilege here. I have two, three members of my family here who just showed up, and I want to thank them. I think they're here because it's my last day. My wife just stepped out, my son Rocco, and my sister from, not from Brooklyn, New York, from, <laughs> from Manhattan, New York. <laughs> we hear so much about you, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? We thought you yes. he was making up a sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was making a sister. My wife uh, stepped out, and, and honestly, they, uh, they weren't here before when the representatives gave the citation, but I... I couldn't do what I do without their support. I mean, that goes to say with all of us, all of us, whether it's the commissioners or the director. When uh, you know you're, as you described, Commissioner Messier taking a call on the boat. Um, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you to them, and I'm sorry my wife stepped down. And, and Rocco remind them of that. Okay. Oh, she went to the parking meter. Those parking meters, they will get you every time. I thought she was leaving. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Okay, Max. Uh, 6.29 and 3.0, Jason. Yes, sir. Uh, commissioners, for your approval, this is amendment the agreement of WFP USA Corporation, the amount of $11,325. Commissioners, this is the annual flyover that we have to do every year. It gives us our elevations and the amount of uh, airspace we still have used or have used, and we have to submit that in our report every year to the EP. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. I'll move to Aye. 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 Thank you. Commissioners, the next one is the crew repair of our clean and stone crusher. We need some parts uh, from Groff equipment in the amount of $12,527. Thirty cents. This just comes out of our maintenance repair budget that we have set aside for our equipment. Okay, motion. I move to approve. I'll second. All there, sorry. Aye. 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 Quick comment. I see, Mr. Yorks. This is the last of your items. I'd be remiss if I didn't say <laughs> these funds have come out of the revenue of the landfill. Correct. So yes, sir. Thank you very much for your support. Much appreciated. Yeah, the public should know that. All these big numbers, especially early on when we passed the 2.1 million and the other, it was both of them had over 800,000 coming out of RMS. So, and and uh, Jason, be reassured that after the first year, we have taped Commissioner Mirabito stating that for future meetings. <laughs> Excellent. Much appreciated. Okay, 6.31, uh, Commissioner seeking your approval uh, for the agreement with Delta Development in the amount of $100,000. Actually, this is not to exceed $100,000 for uh, 2024 as a budgeted item. And this is for our consulting services with them and the planning department. So can you reword that again since it's not on the agenda word properly? Not to exceed. Right. With Delta development, not see $100,000. This is a 2024 budget. Right. And the agreement as it's written is on an ad, as needed basis, right? Correct. That's right. right. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, 6.32, Commissioner seeking your approval to appoint and reappoint uh, the following individuals. Uh, appoint Jeffrey Stroman, correct, following individuals to the Lycoming County Planning Commission. Appoint Jeffrey Stroman, effective 1 1 2024 to 12 31 27. Can we stop there? Yep. Uh, motion? I'll move to approve. A second. And I'll abstain. Mr. Stroman had made a contribution to my campaign. So I'll abstain. So I can carry two of them. Uh, but you didn't well, ask for the vote yet. We vote. just, I made the motion, he seconded. Second, all favor, say aye. 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 And I abstain. Okay. Okay. So let's carry two up. Okay, next one. All right. Um, for reappointment to the Lycoming County Planning Commission, Joseph Rygart, effective 1 1 2024 to 12 31 27. Okay, on motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, and, and again, I'm going to reiterate uh, Commissioner Marabito and Metzger's comments that 
we truly appreciate the volunteers that sit on these boards and especially ones that are as effective at, as uh, the ones we're appointing here. Um, thank God they have a lot of uh, expert uh, knowledge in, in the fields and uh, they've helped us tremendously along the way. So uh, thanks for uh, asking to be put on the board again and being reappointed and continuing to serve us. Thanks. It's a lot of hours and I want to thank a lot of hours. Both, yeah, both gentlemen for stepping up and Joe again and, and Jeff for coming aboard and he, uh, they, they do a great job playing playing commission. All well, volunteers. Yep. All well, volunteers. All right. Six point three three. Got a couple more volunteers. Uh, seeking your approval on the appointment and reappointment of the following individuals to the Lycoming County Zoning Hearing Board. Appointment of Howard Fry as an alternate, uh, effective one one twenty twenty. 24 to 1231-2026. And the reappointment of Leslie Whitehill, effective 1 1 2024 to 1231 Okay. Motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All very side. Aye. Aye. Again, we want to thank both of them for, for their service. I don't see Austin unless you're on the line. I'm on the line. Okay. Uh, 6.34. Yeah. Good afternoon, Commissioners. <clears throat> uh, change order here for you uh, with the amendment three to the agreement for bridge bundling program with Bass Engineering. The change order would increase the amount by $74,366.35, bringing the total contract with Bassett to $910,794.35. Over the last year, there were some items that came up that required additional effort beyond what was reasonably expected. Um, right of way acquisition one, and the largest one being the TRC shop inspections, which is a PennDOT mandated uh, third party inspector for concrete um, beams and other structures coming out of shops. Uh, that's put in place to ensure that the products we receive on site are uh, quality and, and constructed to the proper amount. Um, we received approval to have these funded entirely through the liquid fuel allocation. And even with this change order, um, we did the math that BASA engineering would still be $350,000 lower than the next lowest uh, proposal that we received for bridge bundling. Okay, motion. I'll move to approve. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll second that. It's uh, very difficult when you're trying to bundle 18 plus 2 bridges, and um, you, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, look at what happened out there in Loyal Sock, for example. Mm -hmm. you know, they couldn't get it underneath the lines, and so they had to come up with another engineering way of, of getting that uh, cantilevered over that road without causing any damage. So, I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into it. So I have I have no issue with this. Yeah, I, I like as I echo your comments. They're also seven. You know, the bridges we're dealing with different companies. PPNL PPNL has a charge to move a pole and a time period to move a pole, and that can throw off the whole uh, the whole matrix. So this works out to be about eight point one percent over the uh, the budgeted amount, the amount that he uh, bid on. But he's still, as, as Mr. Daly said, he's 350000 below what the next uh, lowest bidder was. So I want to thank them for that. And it's great, Mr. Daly, that you guys were able to get it approved by PennDOT to use the liquid fuels. Yeah, yeah. We, were, uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to do that on the previous change order. Um, and we were able to do so again here. Um, I will say all 17 bridges are in the ground. Uh, the final one will be opened up by the end of next week and uh, will be paved in the spring uh, when weather permits, um, but will be available for use uh, in the interim. So uh, all said, the 17 bridges for bridge bundling will be done here pretty much next week. Plus the two extra ones we got, right? State. Correct, yes. The state, the big, the big bridges that we got the money from the state for. So. Correct, yep. So here's, here's my question, in my last day here. 
uh, I called you guys up and I asked you about the um, the potholes in the new pavement on East Third Street. Mm -hmm. uh, from PennDOT allowing the, that company to put in the manhole covers and they're two to three inches below the surface. I mean, my vehicles are hitting them all the time. Um, and why, why why is our state government allowing this to happen? Uh, it's something that should be inspected. Uh, so I, I see my state rep over here, uh, no better person to, to get on the horn and say, hey, have them put in some, some uh, extenders, please. Thank you. Okay. All right, lastly, I've got a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. And last, Leslie. Leslie gets to 6.3. Bring it all around. The huh? last action item of 2023. Yay. Speak slowly, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, Matt. Um, seeking your approval for an hourly agreement with a networking company um, in, for the 2004 to 2006 um, year. This is in the 2024 budget. It is an hourly rate of $205, and it's an as-needed basis, so we won't use them unless we need them. Okay, motion. I move to approve. I'll second. Aye. Aye. And I have a comment here. So I was going through clearing out my office and I came across the letter signed by the IT department employees. I think I mentioned this to you, Commissioner Metzger. Yeah. Uh, Pretty cool. It isn't often that we have 10 or 15 employees in the department send a letter to the commissioners that they all sign saying that um, you, Ms. Kilpatrick, and Mark. Uh, we're doing a great job, and it, yeah, and I don't know whether you saw it. I don't know whether you put them up to it. They, <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, two three months ago, it, it never happened, and and it's a testament to the two of you, and a, and something that we haven't done before, where we have co-directors of a department working together, and you guys are doing a, a fantastic job. Thank and, you. Uh, you should know that. Says the letters just saying how. You know, you guys are, are doing a fantastic oh. job leading the department. Um, yeah. And every every single one in the department signed it. Yeah. It was really neat to see. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. You should have said except for one. They made the department <laughs> go round and round. If it wasn't for the team, then yeah. So. But let me tell you, I've been to many departments, and from the treasurers to the maintenance to, and and the employees uh, have uh, high acclaim for their their uh, elected officials Absolutely. as well as your department heads. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you're not alone, but written, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. all the signatures, that was uh, unique. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Happy New Year. Okay, Commissioner Collins. Okay. I'll go quick. It won't be long. Um, you know, with the reassessment, uh, I had five people call me to talk about the reassessment and tell me how it could put a strain on it, um, and which we certainly understand, uh, you know, the uncertainty of what's going to happen. We, we, we get that, okay, because nobody can sit there and tell you exactly how much or how less you're going to pay. But we've advertised this. We've mentioned it in several public meetings. And I only had five calls. When we had our bout with the library, I had 450 calls. Right? So what's important to some people aren't important to others. And what we think is really, really important, they don't care. Right? I mean, it's just the way it is. And it's that snapshot in time. And that's what we're elected to do. We're elected to make tough decisions. Okay. Um, I'd like to to say thank you, uh, Commissioner Metzger. Um, a very solid person. Uh, things will go well in the future, I'm sure. Be always optimistic, um, and always think of us. 
you know, when you're making a decision. Um, your prayers have calmed me. Seriously. Uh, they're tremendous. You put a lot of effort into them. And I, I think we make better decisions under the guidance of God. And, and you're a leader that recognizes that. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mayor Vito, I mean, uh, we've had our share battles, I mean, you know, which, which is okay. Um, but I can tell you that serving with you has been an honor, that you're a, a man of high integrity, that you are a great uh, uh, family man, loves your family, loves your son, your wife, uh, your sister, obviously. <laughs> you better make God, God sure. her. Glad she's the middle child. <laughs> we're, glad to, we're glad to see she exists. But um, when, <laughs> but, but when you talk about um, really uh, taking every effort uh, to to make every meeting that you, you can, you have been there. Uh, you look. We don't always agree. And, uh, but your arguments have always been intense. And when I say arguments for or against something, uh, and well thought out. And uh, I just think it's a, a better form of government. That uh, if we all agree, um, mm, something isn't going to be right. Or, or spending will get out of control. And um, ideas will be missed. And opportunities missed. So uh, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, again, it was it was awesome. Uh, I want to thank my wife, my kids. Uh, a lot of sacrifice. I love you guys. Here's the reason I did it. So, uh, and to the future boards, good luck. Uh, stay optimistic and uh, work hard and get things done. Well, Commissioner, I, I want to, uh, first I want to thank you, too, and, uh, and agree that the prayers that you have given have always been on point in terms of helping us to remember, uh, whether it's uh, veterans or whether it's uh, people in the community, um, and uh, you, I think, may miss Commissioner Masser and I sitting at either ends of the table, which we began during COVID. Uh, and um, just our repartee, I guess is the word, our back and forth badminton. But hopefully in an effort to try to get to a better understanding of an idea or a better understanding of an issue. And, and likewise, uh, Commissioner, I, you know, you've always had a passion and you've, and you've got the real life experience to bring into government, uh, which is extremely important. I mean, you both do. Um, and, and Commissioner Metzger, I have, I have enjoyed the fact that you've had 32 years here and you've been able to give us uh, a reflection on some of the things that have happened uh, in the past, um, whether it's in the uh, areas of benefits or whatever. Uh, but, but likewise, I've enjoyed very much serving with both of, both of you. And uh, as I did with Mr. McKernan, who I see has had to leave. Um, but. Um, Commissioner Bessere, I'm sure I will see you. Um, and uh, you know, we we had a long <laughs> road together. I I think about how uh, years ago when I was running for state rep, uh, and we had some of the same conversations that you had with uh, that Jamie, you and Jamie had. And uh, and I've known I've known your kids longer than I've known you and Mary. I've known Anthony and and John. I didn't know as long, but Anthony was uh, oh God, he was so young. <laughs> when I first met him, um, where have the years gone? Um, but uh, and Mr. McDermott, you're a hard, hard worker. You are a hard, hard worker. Um, and and uh, as Commissioner Metzger said, you you're there 24/7. You know, and and quite frankly, it gives us the ability to to know that the ship is being handled when when we're away. Um, I, I really I want to thank our solicitors. You know I see David J David Smith in the audience, um, and uh, 
You know, it was interesting when we first came on, he, he was one of the first people I spoke to after being sworn in. And uh, we rely on solicitors. We rely on solicitors to give us the legal perspective on decisions we're making. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to agree with them, but they're going to tell us the consequences. And I think it's important for the commissioners coming in to recognize, and I see Mr. Wiley here too, both of them have been, um, and, and Chris with the retirement board, all of them have been available all times of day and night to answer questions for us. And uh, it's, it's important for commissioners to come in to, to understand their legal implications to what we do. And so you don't necessarily want to just shoot from the hip. You want to understand what is, what is the consequence of what we're having. You still make, may make a decision, but at least you're knowing ahead of time. Um, I want to thank the people of the county for giving me the privilege to, to represent being an elected official, you have to love learning, because if you really want to do the job properly, you need to learn. What did I know about running a prison before I came here? Not that I'm an expert on running a prison now, but I know a hell of a lot more than I did eight years ago. Um, and you also have to uh, like learning and you have to like people. I think Commissioner uh, Masser's comments earlier, you know, getting people engaged and putting them into motion is really important for elected officials to do because if they and, and putting them into motion may be that they're saying things you don't agree with but it's important to get their involvement and it's true we've had whether it's the library issue or the re recounting the ballot issue we've had people in the community in motion and that means that they're engaged in their government the reason it's so important is because when people when information is kept from the public the public doesn't have to take responsibility for the decisions that are made. Or the flip side of that is when elected officials are transparent and keep the public informed about what's going on, the public has to take responsibility for decisions that are made. Because if you're not happy with the decision, then vote them out of office. Right? So the worst thing you can do as an elected official is to say, oh geez, we don't want the public to know about this. We want the public to know, and we want the public to to take accountability and to take responsibility. Um, and if that means voting us out, you know, that, that's, a, that's a consequence. Um, but there, there's so many people in this room, I, I'm looking at, at, uh, at Mr. George, Ken George, who all of us have relied on to, um, to keep these buildings running, you know, and <coughs> tirelessly works to, to try to save money for the taxpayers behind the scenes. Our elected officials, the prothonotary, Tom Heap, who, who also had, what, 25 years here as an employee, had Mr. Kermit's job for a while, right? Now as an elected official, the sheriff. The sheriff who... who Drive like, you nuts. No. <laughs> Sometimes we had one disagreement, but it was okay, because we because uh, it's okay to disagree. What a day. What a day. <laughs> what a day. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, our press corps back there, Mr. Stout, and we're missing, yes, from the Web Weekly, and, and we're missing uh, Pat and the other reporters from the Sun Gazette. And, of course, we have Mr. Uh, oh, Boji, right, Mr. Boji, who I've known, actually, since I was over at the federal court. Did your name escape me temporarily? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, uh, and then, of course, we have prior commissioners here, um, you know, Ernie Larson and Jeff Ralph and Jack McKernan was here, and I don't know if there are any other, well, he mentioned to Bob, you know, Bob Weiss was a state rep, but we, all the work we've done has been because of the work they did, you know. Um, we have, uh, we have, um, you guys got to help me out here because I'm, I'm losing my brain. I don't know, do you want me to call some other people? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have, we have our, our, our uh, Mr. Forrest Lehman, right? I think the public needs to know about them and, and the work that's done behind the scenes. You know, he took a lot of heat this year, but he did things by the book. The man's an Eagle Scout. Well, I mean that because he has integrity and he made a point of making sure he knew what the law was with regard to the elections. He wasn't shooting from the hip and he, he took a lot of heat personally. Uh, but he did what what was right, and that's important for our and and the three of us had full confidence in knowing 
that he was doing what the law required. And Mr. Huffman, a newly second term register and recorder who's done a fabulous job of trying to preserve our history, right, with books that were deteriorating. Um, it, it has, as you said, it's been a team effort by everybody. I don't know if the treasurer is here. The, tr the newly elected treasurer, right, second term, right, who also has um, worked to try to, to get the men to see things from a different perspective. Because sometimes we men see the world from one perspective, and we need to try to see it from other perspectives too. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say Mr. Fink is here. And Mr. Fink and I have had a long history together. Um, what's that? <laughs> but the truth be told that we both, um, I think, and, and I think you reflected this at the, uh, at the chamber meeting, we've both grown a lot in terms of our understanding of what each, and appreciation of what each does in their role as the, as the chamber and their role as an elected official. That doesn't mean I won't be bugging you about the hotel time. <laughs> I would be disappointed if you did. I know you would. Um, but um, I... Uh, and then Michelle Becker, too. Yeah, Where's Michelle? Michelle? Michelle Green. Yes. She's great. She, Michelle Green is an example of a constituent who comes to the meetings and challenges us with questions. Oh, an attorney herself, right? She, she challenges our, uh, what we're doing and she challenges us to uh, make sure we're doing it properly. And, it, and there are other folks here. Who have we missed? Is there anybody in the hallway or? No. But listen, Jim Dunn. No, listen. No, no, no. Jim Dunn. Jim, you should stand up. Seriously. He's been a township elected official for 18 years. He brought to the commissioners and single-handedly, along with Brian Almond, did the work to get on the other side of this river and an entire, which the county, the county put up the money but came through. We didn't have to pay for it, we got money from the state, right? To put in that conservation district that's gonna allow people to check into a hotel, pay their hotel tax, which is gonna to go to the county, <laughs> walk across the bridge to a conservation area for bird watching, for getting into the river. One of the things that amazed me, I didn't grow up here, is you can't necessarily get on the river around here unless you've got a river lot. I thought, oh my God, I grew up on Long Island, we can get to the ocean through public beaches. That's going to be a place for people, ordinary people in this community to get on the river. And that's going to be huge. And we thank you, Jim, really, for the work you did on that. Absolutely. It wouldn't have happened without you, there's no question. Um, so anyway, thanks to all of you. It has been a great time. Um, and, and, and it's been a lot of fun. And not so many headaches, but... Well, neither, listen, neither one of you are going anywhere because, as I've been kidding you for several months now, that uh, there'll be a future meetings because anyone that's familiar with the Muppets, <laughs> the two old guys are sitting about me. <laughs> there they are. They'll be in corners of the, of the back of the back of the uh, commissioner's room heckling us. <laughs> they'll be heckling us. So, um, so we look for. But on a serious note, it's been a pleasure to serve with you both. As, as I highlighted, you see the accomplishments. We got things done. We did it as a team. It wasn't just the three of us. It was the 600 plus of us in this county. From the elected officials to the department heads to the, to the regular uh, workers every day that come to work and, and put a ton of time into their, their jobs uh, to make us look good. And, and you're only good, as good as the people that surround you. And we're surrounded by a lot of good people. And there's some who aren't here today, and I mean this, and, and I think all three of us mean it sincerely, the controller's not here today. But she has done her darndest to make sure that we comply with the law, which we have. And she's done, it has made a, a, a strong effort to do that. We may disagree, and we're gonna wait to hear the decision from the Court of Appeals, but we, respect and we appreciate her. And I'm trying to think of what other elected officials, Commissioner. We've got all of them. The DA. Yeah. The DA. The DA. We have sure. we work with all these folks. The yeah. district attorney, who else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the judges, the, 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 the courts. Yep. Or 
The, cor the coroner, yes, absolutely. We need to thank the coroner for also the years and the people on his staff. We're so staff. thankful we found him a home. Yes. It's great news. And, and uh, again, it's, it's, you're only successful, as successful as the people that surround you. And because of their success, it makes us all success as a team. So thank you. We want to thank everybody for attending today, this marathon meeting, to close out 2023. Oh, okay. And uh, Director, do you have anything? Oh, yeah. oh we got, I'm sorry. We got public comment. Public comment from the audience. Yes. I apologize. Mr. Dunn, you can go first. One oh, step. Thank you. One step behind. Okay. Yes, public comment. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Yes. It, thanks, Rick and Tony. It's been a lot over the years. But I'm mostly here to, to thank you for, for two reasons. Your investment in infrastructure and quality of life. So Rick was talking about the Robert Porter Allen natural area. And with the county's investment with that, we were able to leverage that into a NACA grant, which is North American Waterfowl Act. This is the hardest grant in North America to get. This is Mexico, Canada, and the United States. It's never been awarded in Pennsylvania, but it was awarded to us. A million dollars, and we used it to restore four wetlands across the state. First and probably only time to ever receive that. And it comes directly from the action of this board. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, and the other investments with that would be like the Ridge Trail and what DCNR is doing in uh, Loyal Sock Creek and Pine Creek. Coming closer to making Lycoming County the recreational center for the state. And although at this point it doesn't necessarily put a lot of heads in beds, it does sell a lot of coffee, beer, and burgers and tremendously improves the quality of life for the citizens here, which helps with recruiting and retention for the hospital and other institutions in the area. It's, it's tremendous value to us, and your support in that area has been tremendous, and thank you. And the other is in infrastructure, because nothing functions without infrastructure. And if I hear bridge bundling one more time, just so you know, there was 52 structurally deficient bridges in Lake Huntley County. You may have heard that before. And you guys have taken, what, 18 or 19 off the list? And I hope in the next round that we'll take the critical piece of infrastructure that protects all of our water source for the area on, on the list. And the next board will continue this investment in the bridge bundling program. Having you know, adequate infrastructure is probably the most important thing for the safety of your community and the recruiting intention of, of you know, what we need to have a functioning society. And the action with the Bridge Bowling Program has been tremendous. And, you know, thank you so much for that. And long meeting. Thank but, you. you know, thank you. Good comments. Yeah. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> I've been waiting for this day for a long time. <laughs> i got to go back and finish cooking food so I can't be too long. I had no idea you guys were done. Well, you have 11 hours, 9 minutes, and 42 seconds left <laughs> with us. I have good news. Good news. Rick, we're, we're going to take your emergency desk alarm. Kenny's going to take it out. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> Scott, we're going to the health center and taking your blood pressure med. You won't need that anymore. I'm not on any. Tony? <laughs> Tony, we're going to give... You find guns. We're going to give... <laughs> we're going to find your gun eventually. Um, someday. Um probably down in Philly. And we're going to give Anthony Jr. your boxing gloves. So we won't, we won't need any of that. Anyway, um, it's been quite a ride. Um, I have to say, and I say this a lot, you know, I, I end up speaking for others when maybe they are too shy to speak. Um, but I did hear long ago that the reason that you don't meet with me isn't because you don't like me. It's because you want me to wear him down rather than me wear you guys down when I bring in my, my material. I th think you've said to me I've come pretty prepared when we come in. Um, I do have to say uh, from the sheriff's perspective from my office, um, I've always had support from the commissioners. Um, sometimes not as fast and not as quick as we want government to work, but with the huge challenges that we've had with security, and this is my four, in my, end of my 14th year now, um, the world has changed completely in how we deal with everything we deal with. Uh, 
COVID was an unimaginable event. Uh, Commissioner Metzger, when you said about how often we met, or, or Commissioner Marbito, we literally met uh, under the leadership of the Colonel every day for at least a year, weekends, holidays, um, every single day. Uh, it was a huge challenge. But we came together as an elected official group, as a department head group, and we got through it. Uh, didn't always agree uh, with everything, but we certainly got through it. From the resource side of the Sheriff's Office, um, you've always uh, listened to what we've needed to provide better support. Uh, we never, when, when Scott, when you were a young APO officer, as a young officer, we never had deputies on the floor, the floors of the courthouse. We have deputies, we have 13 courts, and right now, except for the MDJs, I'll talk about that in a minute, we have deputies assigned to every courtroom in the courthouse, which is five, which is five trial judge courtrooms and then two family court hearing officers. We have deputies assigned every single day, all day long, because of what, what goes on. We, we screened very aggressively. Uh, I think last year we, we intercepted 40 or 45 guns coming into the courthouse and about 1,200 other weapons. And the work just doesn't stop, and you've always been there to support all those initiatives that we needed. Um, the, the civil unrest the equipment, um, Rick gets a, a buy for that because um, I, I don't believe, I, I don't believe that he was informed, but that's okay as far as how, how he thought he should have been informed. But the bottom line is, once he had known about the project, and he told us, once he realized the importance of it, you came, for, you came through. You know, we, we had those groups coming in, and they, they converged in the city, and we had to have huge resources available. And without going into you know, security details, we had a huge, hidden, uh, almost armada, ready to roll, if we had to roll. We had one small skirmish that occurred uh, in Brandon Park, and we stopped it within minutes, um, in great part because of what you've done to help uh, support the sheriff's office and what the colonel has done. So it's kind of bittersweet. I'm looking forward to the new commissioners. I've already started to drive them nuts with orientation and transition, and I'll continue to, to educate our, our two new commissioners. But I want to thank you personally uh, for what you've done, and. Uh, don't ever hesitate if there's anything we can do to help you from the sheriff's side to let us know. Thank you. Great chair. Anybody else from the public? In the so audience? Forrest? <clears throat> I guess it is good afternoon now. Uh, <laughs> we're saying a, a very long goodbye to two county commissioners, which is fitting and proper, but uh, as I was thinking about this, I realized from my perspective, I think about, in addition to the two of you, all the other local elected officials all over this county who will be stepping down at the end of the year from terms of office. Uh, township supervisors, borough council, school directors, uh, all people who came to us from the ranks of our citizens. Uh, and they'll be returning to the ranks themselves when those terms of office end at the end of this year. But that's where they came from first. They were citizens first, and they stepped forward. They came, in, in many cases, to voter services. They filed petitions to run for public office. And Teddy Roosevelt believed it was essential for citizens to enter public life and assume mantles of leadership and responsibility. He talked about it. He gave a famous speech about it in Paris in 1910. Uh, he called it citizenship and a republic, but we know it more commonly today as the man in the arena speech. And in that speech, he contemplated to his audience what conditions needed to be met for a democratic republic to thrive. And he argued that the quality of the individual citizen is supreme. So he put it right back on the citizenry. He believed the only way for it to endure was for the average citizen to not only do his or her duty in their everyday lives, but to also heed that call to do more. And so that's why we need to be thankful for those who heed the call to these elected positions, because it's been said today that serving as an elected official has become increasingly complicated, increasingly thankless uh, as a job. And in the case of the school directors, the borough council, the township supervisors, 
a lot of these offices, they're not even paid. But citizens came forward anyway. Uh, they stepped into the arena to do the work. And that's what Roosevelt calls it. Uh, he calls it the arena, the man in the arena. The person who is willing to go out there with the spotlight on them and make decisions and endure the slings and the arrows that inevitably result from that, knowing that no matter what they do, half the people will disagree. Uh, you stepped forward to become part of the public life of this county, to become caretakers of an institution that must survive beyond us, that has to grow beyond us. But the first commissioners of this county, they were elected back in 1795. They took office in 1796 when George Washington was wrapping up his first term of, as president. And you are part of that history now. There may already be some dust collecting on you. <laughs> you may need to brush that off. Uh, but Roosevelt respected those citizens who put themselves out there to serve in public life because he believed it was absolutely essential to sustaining the republic, uh, which he called himself, he called it a gigantic social experiment. And because he put that emphasis, that value on citizens entering public service, he also had some blunt words for the critics who sit outside the arena. I guess you could call it the cheap seats. Uh, you know, the critics who think maybe they could have done things differently. Maybe they could have done them better. And he said about them, quote, it's not the critic who counts. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who does actually strive to do the deeds. I'm really boiling his speech down. You should all read his speech to the Sorbonne, it's very good. Uh, so maybe you made some mistakes, however long you've been doing this. Maybe you have regrets. Maybe you could have done some things differently or better. But you know what? That's life. That's just how it goes. Uh, Roosevelt is saying that what matters is that you and the other citizens across this county uh, whose terms of office are ending, they all came forward to do the work. And we need that civic spirit and engagement. We need more of it from more people. I see that need every local election year on the ballots I have to put together where we've got too many offices that are empty of candidates. So thank you for your public service. Thank you for your time, your energy, your dedication. Thank you for stepping forward. I think if Teddy Roosevelt was here, he would say bully for you, but I'll just say take care. And, and best wishes in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome. Mr. Stout, I think you have your article for next week right there. <laughs> and by the way, thanks for the article. It was very nice. Larry. Thank you. You know, anybody else from the audience? Okay. Okay. Yes. Mr. Lehman, you raise a really good point. Those school directors and the local officials who are not necessarily being acknowledged, and they should be, um, because it, that is really a... a uh, volunteer position and they go to meetings and, and they're the ones who enable us when Commissioner Metzger said we gave each school district $200 per student during COVID to make sure everyone had a, had a uh, Chromebook it's because those school boards were there to do what they had to do and and we thank them we depend on them and the township supervisors and the borough officials Online. Okay. Online comments? Yep. Uh, Jacob Stauffer first. Keystone Chief first. William Fenderson. <clears throat> Still nothing on nonprofit. Property ownership is a right and responsibility to the community. Uh, Keystone Chief. To not reassess the property values in the county would be irresponsible and will continue to gut programs and services for our most vulnerable citizens. Thomas Adams, I am sorry for not being able to attend the meeting in person. Thank you, Rick and Tony, for your service and, more importantly, your friendships. I sent an email to the commissioners as my comments were too lengthy for me to send via the live chat. Please pass the email on to the new commissioners, too. I wish you all a happy and prosperous new year. 
Thomas Adams, P.S. Thank you, Scott and Matt, for your service. Thank you, Thomas Adams. Thank you. And the last thing I'd like to do is bring the families up of Commissioner Massar and Commissioner Marabito for a photo. And our meetings adjourn until next year, 2024. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, have a safe and happy new year. Now, for everyone else, uh, please, one sec. We have, we have a small, we have a get together in the back room here for our commissioners who would like to stay. Does my camera not work? Oh, no, I'm taking a lot. Oh, okay. I can tell him I send that. Press the red button. Oh, come on. Come on, Rocco. I know that. No, he, he, so he, oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. You guys are excited about that. Oh, I'll try. Yeah, they're gonna, it's going to be sweet. Trust me. Mr.